All right. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. As you can see, I dressed up a little bit. You know I'm on a video here on the internet, whatever you call it, on the Super 8. You know I have a guest, and I dressed up because he's always dressing up. This guy's one of the most legendary stand-up comedians of all time, certainly of my generation, a guy I've looked up to forever. And when I first started doing The Road, I used to be like, I want to be like this guy. I want to travel like that. Uh, the one and only, Doug Stanhope. Thanks for having me, sir. How are I'm you? Sorry about that. Uh, that was very awkward, what just happened. Evidently, your What's people that? and my people have been talking about show ideas. And uh, all of a sudden, a pitch meeting sprung up out there. Yeah, they said, I, can you show up a half hour early? And I was sitting there going, oh. Oh, they told me you I wanted thought you me were... a half hour early. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. I thought you were well, dying you no or something. What the fuck I thought you were dying. You were going to be like, listen, Bill, this is my <laughs> last time to L.A. Is no. that what happened? Why are they such fucking assholes? Yeah. Well, he said, yeah, oh, I, I mentioned that to, to the guy, the comedy death camp. And I go, yeah, I remember that was an idea. But I didn't even know you, like, you produce shit, shit. I haven't seen you in fucking years. And all of a sudden, they spring a pitch meeting. All right, I thought it was a nice way to reconnect. <laughs> <laughs> for me to sit. Well, what was funny is we were just sitting there shooting the shit for like 20 <laughs> minutes. And then I got in my head going like, has it been so long that I saw that I've seen you that you felt like you needed to reconnect with me? It's like I've known this guy for like 25 years, um, which is what I was alluding to when we um, when I did the uh, the intro from way back 90 seconds ago. I remember when I when I was. Uh, when I was starting out, not starting out, I was about seven, eight years, and like I wanted to start doing the road, and I wanted, and I wanted to do the road. I wanted to go out there. I wanted to do all the hell gigs. I wanted to, you know, live all of those stories. And I remember you and Hedberg were just out there doing it, and that's like what I wanted to do. And they they had this big um, showcase down the Laugh Factory, and it was my favorite showcase I ever did at the Laugh Factory in the 90s. It was no networks, nothing TV or movie related. It was just club owners that for whatever reason were in town. And I was so fucking excited to go up there and kill so I could go to these places. And I remember saying to this other comic who later went on to star in a trilogy of movies, I remember saying like, yeah, I mean, you know, I heard the, guy, the guys from Stanford and Son in Kansas City are here. And he, lit, uh, and, uh, he just looked at me, he goes... I don't want to go to Kansas City. <laughs> and I got all in my head like, oh shit, should I not want to go to Kansas City? But I, I wanted to go to all of those places and then I quickly found out, I was like, wait a minute, the sports stadiums are here. I want to go look at them. What if I got to go to a game? Like it was, uh, for me, uh, doing the road for the first like, I don't know, eight years was this giant field trip yeah. of a loner sports fan <laughs> nerd. And everywhere I went, to do stand up, you you and, and Mitch Hedberg, you guys were like the legends, um, the fucking stories of all the shit. Specifically, you and what you did in the comedy condos and all of that. Yeah, and, I remember the last time I did your podcast, which has been a long and uh, one of your podcasts. How many do yeah. you have now? I I just have this one, and then I do a, a one with Paul Verzi. We just right, we well, just I talk saw, about sports I saw a gambling. Clip of that when you fucking yeah. you I did one that with fucking Eagles over the uh, Commanders, where oh. the Eagles were unbeaten, and you go, no, Washington's going to win this. Philly's going to screw it up so badly yeah. they're going to lose to some fucking schlub divisional team. Yeah, I was bad this this year. I was I was you know busy editing something, so I I, I didn't watch enough of it this year. So Verzi is the one. Verzi beat the book two years in a row. Nice. Um. Uh, yeah, it, it but I did your. Uh, b b you had one with Bert because I did that. During so quarantine. Bert was the one that we did during the quarantine. Yeah. It was like during a quarantine, we're just sitting around. I missed friends and all of that type of stuff. So we were like, why don't we just? I think that's another one. Like, how did that even come together? Then yeah. it came together, and then the quarantine ends. Then you get busy again. And it's just like it just got to the point. I was like, I don't have time to fucking do all of this. Yeah, uh, I wonder how many podcasts that people just invented during quarantine have, are gone now. It yeah, like, there was a lot. I like... Is I like, Bert still fucking cooking? Didn't he have a cooking show or something? Yeah, something's burning. I think the rumor is is he's still... He's got more episodes. I think he's got more episodes all coming right. up. Um, well, he will be burning more stuff. Um, I actually... Uh, 
I actually made my wife a grilled cheese sandwich when she came. My wife was all, my wife was on the road, right? And she came back. Uh, she was actually just doing like a girls trip, like because I did a golf trip with the guys. I don't really even golf. It's fucking hilarious. Dude. I'm the funniest golfer ever. Where like I take holes off. I I'll, heard that podcast because uh, yeah. you're with your guy there. What's his name? Mussolini? No, Berlina. Berlina. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Mussolini. I kind of like that, dude. That's a fucking great one. Uh, said, uh, yeah, but Hennigan said that, yeah, your guy talked to Hennigan and said, yeah, we were playing golf. And then on the way back, he said, you drive because I got a podcast. And he said, you just podcast right in your iPhone and then send it. Yeah. It's that easy. I, like, I wish I knew this simplest thing. No, I think a big mistake that certain people make is they try to make it too big. And then it just becomes like this giant pain in the ass. Like, I never wanted guests. I do it now. Now it's like fun because we actually have, a you know, this setup. I don't have to deal with anything. But like, I just did it. I did it first just as a way to like, you know, promote my dates. But um, I didn't want to deal with guests because I know like, oh, dude, 20 minutes. Oh, can you do this? I can't. Can we reschedule? It's just like, and my whole thing is like, I didn't get in this business to have a fucking job. Yeah, I don't want to start like working on like um. What, it might be the beginning of taxi when they would have the taxi schedule, trying to figure out when to send Jim out and whatever. It's like I don't want to fucking deal with that, dude. I just want to, <clears throat> I just want to like, you know, like uh, like when I went golfing with Bertolina. <laughs> it was the last time I was here. I was just like, you know, I was going golfing with a buddy of mine. I go, yeah, we're going golfing on. Uh, Monday, I'm like, you want to play hooky? He's like, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. And it's just, to be able to live a life like that, yeah. forget about whether you make money or not. If you can actually pay your bills, and but you're living a life where you could just be yeah, like, hey, you're you doing want, a you... bunch of shit. I mean, yeah, I know, but I mean, but even before I was doing a bunch of shit, I could go see a Kansas City Royals game during the fucking day where if they scored 12 runs, uh, uh, what was the one that wasn't Dunkin' Donuts? The crack one, the other, the other donut fucking thing. Uh, Krispy Kreme. You win a dozen Krispy Kremes. You won a dozen donuts. If the Royals, who absolutely fucking sucked, when I went, <laughs> they were gonna win like thirty games that year. If they somehow scored twelve runs against some fucking team. Krispy Kreme would give everybody a free dozen donuts. And, dude, they was, it was like 11 to 8, and the fucking place was going nuts. Like, George Brett was still there. And this guy got up and hit, like, a bloop single or something, and they scored. And it was, like, it was unbelievable. You almost saw, like, how you run for president. It's like, this is, it's not about the issues. It's what, what, give me, just give me some free shit that's going to be gone in a half hour. I like this guy. Give me free donuts. I mean, they were going fucking nuts no one was going like what is baseball at this point <laughs> where fucking Boston and New York just use our whole franchise as like a fucking farm team they the second you, they, they were mad about that you gave them free fucking donuts over all was forgiven it was amazing so anyway my wife was coming coming I just like doing that like the news well with the jacket it, yeah it feels say. good it feels right you feel like you know things yeah my wife was coming off the road and I was fucking dead ass tired and her flight got cancelled and I hate coming back from the road to a quiet house. I just fucking hate that shit. So I sucked it up and I was just like, you want something to eat? You know, you want a bath or something ready? You know, just those types of things. Because I'm an asshole, so I got to make sure I, I build up Balance. some. Yeah, some frequent flyer miles <laughs> that I can use when I'm being a dick. So fucking crush this grilled cheese sandwich, man. <laughs> kind of into it was crunchy. It's the whole, the whole fucking deal. We are so off the rails right now. We're actually here to promote. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I... I, that's what it is, because you're steering this towards me, and then I'll start talking. I know I what know, you're doing. I, 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 yeah, I know what you're doing. You're one of the great comics of all fucking time, and you're going to one of the great countries and continents in the lower yes. hemisphere. Yeah, yeah, and it's summer there. <laughs> I'm such a pussy. I live in Arizona, and, you know, it... it, it Can I say where you're 40s? going first before yeah, you... Yeah, you sure. Literally, you're like... I never met a guy so anti-promoting himself. Yeah. At your, it's uncomfortable. It, yeah, it's like a Patrice level. Uh, Doug Stanhope, who you must go see, is going to be touring Australia. He's going down under, everybody. Uh, February 18th to March 3rd. You got some days off in the middle. This man knows how to tour. Brisbane, yes. February 18th, February 20th in Perth. You got to go visit Bon Scott's grave if you never did that. Little creature. I've seen his uh, statue there on the beach, right? Yeah, 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 it's cool. Sydney, Australia, not one, but two nights at the North Auditorium, February 24th, 25th, 27th, and is it Canberra? I never even Canberra. heard of it. Canberra. Where is that? 
It's the uh, it's, it's South Central, I believe. I mean, for uh, an American comedian, that's a uh, pretty isn't that obscure the one. Yeah, it's the capital. Yeah, it's the capital. Capital of what? Australia. Australia. It's not Sydney or Melbourne. No. Nope. Nope. Oh, that's like how like Albany's the capital of New York. Yeah. All right. So they some great shit was happening, but not for a while. Right. Or like Ottawa is the capital of Canada. Yeah. It's like is it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even play Ottawa. Glory days. Um. Adelaide, March 1st, <clears throat> March 3rd, you'll be in uh, Melbourne. Um, that's a fun city. Yeah. Melbourne's a fun city. I went Last time I think I went there, I just happened to go there in the, in the it, U.S. Open. I think it's kind of like Portland, Seattle, where it, or Austin maybe, where it was really cool. I like Seattle, I of those three. I think it might. It's been a while since I've been there, but it's, like, it's uh, not as hip as it pretends it is, like oh, Austin, no. you know. They get a little oh. fucking snooty. I think that's the place that you'd get in trouble for saying shit if there is a place over there. But I know. Isn't it wild, and though? I, I remember being in Melbourne at one point and saying saying how you're all racist, and they fucking cheered. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Like, what? <laughs> Wait, isn't it kind of a weird thing how, like, when we were young, older people used to get offended you if you pissed yeah. off older people you were in trouble and the older people were the establishment and now that we're old it's like younger people are the establishment and they're the ones that can end your career like this has been a weird like when do we get to be the assholes going like hey i don't like what you just said there that offends me and my bald ginger fucking universe um i actually think that most of that is is complete horseshit anyways i think it's yeah. a very small amount of people and, yeah, because uh, I, I, well, I've been people fucked want, People lately. want the real shit. Like, I always take off between Thanksgiving and Super Bowl. And, as I say, at house used fire. used to just be through January 1st. Now you go all the way to the Super Bowl. Well, I, like I, I always have. Like, I, I, I've done the last couple of years, I've done uh, New Year's Eve in Vegas. But otherwise, Thanksgiving through Super Bowl, I'm watching playoffs and shit. And, uh, Fucking smart. Yeah. But now the, my fucking house burned down. Didn't burn down, but I know it you burned. were telling me that. So, so I, yeah, I've been living out of hotels for the entire Wait, you, time you I'm said supposed you, you, to have you off. Had a, you had a fire, like an electrical fire, goddamn space heaters, right? Yeah, yeah. So it, it was all burned from the ceiling up. So. All these canceled comedians, and you can still sell a space heater, you know? <laughs> but I had solar put in, so I'm like, fuck, I'm going to get a bunch of space heaters. I'm not going to use gas if I get right. free electric because I get solar. Well, it burned the fucking roof down, so now they have to take off the solar paneling and then take off the roof and rebuild the fucking... So this at is least till April. they're going to post. Doug Stanhope rants against solar power. <laughs> Hashtag fuck you, Jimmy Carter. Point is, that I'm so I, 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 I was going to cancel Australia just because the insurance has been just a fucking nightmare to deal with. They're oh, saying, they're the worst. It's, yeah. It's, and See, I'm that, like, what if I have to sign shit when I'm in Australia? And I go, fuck it. It's summer there. I don't those care. Those guys are fucking criminals. They're literally <laughs> fucking criminals. And none of those fuck, all of these platforms that are going off and they're trying to like fucking destroy people in the individual's life. They don't do shit to them. You can turn the food supply into poison. You can fucking get people addicted to heroin. You can do whatever the fuck you want as long as you buy commercial time on those cunts fucking channels, CNN and, and Fox News. And they don't say a fucking word. But if you're an individual, yeah, forget it. If you're driving well, your little I, I van, fixing people sink, and your dick fell out of your slacks one day, forget it. You're going down. I, I can't go and State Farm quite yet going down. because... Like, first of all, they have to deal... First of all, they got to find someone to work. I live in a small town where no one wants to fucking work. Right. It's like everyone's on disability or, you know, social security or something. How you did you end fucking, up there? It's a cool town I found when I was... I had to leave L.A. I was fed up. Mm -hmm. And I found this town that I'd gone back to. I was just killing time between gigs in Phoenix and El Paso. I had three days off, so I was just driving around. And it's just such a beautiful town. And it's really? 5,000 people. And I love small town. I love no traffic. It's uh, amazing, just, right? Usually small town means fucking hillbilly, you know, redneck. But this is kind of half artsy, half. You still see That's perfect. people that have a sidearm in the fucking convenience yeah, store. Yeah, and, and people that are into like spaceships. Yeah, exactly. You need, that's the balance yeah, you need a in a small beautiful <laughs> balance. Yeah. Some uh, chick with uh, dread, white chick with dreadlocks with a rainbow color in it. <laughs> All right, I, I can. Yeah, those towns are um, 
I'm not going to say the name of it because it's, I don't want a bunch of people to move there on this guy, but I know a comedian that moved to a town like that in uh, a Midwest state. And you went out there and you're like, oh, this is a, this is a nice little, it has that Is the older guy? Well, it has a, was he a mayor of that town? No. Are you okay. talking Clint Eastwood? No, I was thinking Drew Hastings. He moved to some small Ohio town, I think. Oh, that's amazing. Became mayor, had a scandal. <laughs> Funny guy. Had a scandal. Okay. I, I forget. Some, they, uh, uh, some whore threw herself at him. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, Some financial. A tale as old as Ohio camp. itself. Comedian <laughs> moves to small town, becomes the mayor, and has. I a, just it played, must have been a sex scandal. I just scandal. played Dayton, and uh, I guess it's uh, a sex Chappelle's scandal. Chappelle's little town mm -hmm. is Yellow Springs, Ohio, which is like 30 minutes out of. I, like, I want to go to Chappelle's town and uh, just get a real estate person to show me around, just for the rumors well, well, to spread. While you're there. <laughs> There's a there's a farm there that has you know to sustain the farm. Not only are they farming, they also have like a restaurant and a dairy place. One of the greatest milkshakes I've ever gotten in my fucking life. Like you're literally looking at the cows as you you can tip your your, your glass to them. I did his COVID shows. I have thought about that milkshake for fucking oh, over. Shit. I mean, it was like. Two years ago? When the hell was that? 2020 or 2021? I can't remember if, if he had those shows. I think it was the next year. I don't fucking remember. I just remember that milkshake, though. I'm not a food guy like that, but there was a place we just hit in Nashville, Tennessee, that had the best breakfast taco I've ever had. And for the rest of the tour, every morning at breakfast, we're going, fuck. Yeah, chasing it. Yeah, nothing's Still ever your... going to top oh, that's that. the worst. What's the name of the place? Don't remember. <laughs> It's Do you probably remember the name thing. of your milkshake place? No, but it's the only yeah. giant barn with rides. It has like a fucking water slide next to some cows. I mean, that's All right, well, if much... you're in the Nashville Zany's condo, look for breakfast, breakfast tacos near me, and it's the closest one. Okay. Yeah, that's how I found it. Yeah, because who the fuck has tacos in Nashville? I've, uh, but they're not as rare as you think, but it's not like Maine. Maine actually had a decent burrito when I went there one really? time in Portland. All right. How fucking old are we? I'll tell you what has a good cup of coffee. <laughs> Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> they got a lunch counter and a special. <clears throat> if you walk in there and you have funny bone passes and a sport coat. I like when we're both dressing like 80s comics. I, I did a thing the other night and I just decided I was going to dress like the comedians that uh, inspired me. All of those 80s comics, for better or for worse. A lot of them because they were funny. And then towards the end... They gave me a like, well, I could fucking do that. Jesus Christ. That's, you know, when that person was on, you know. Yeah, what's more inspiring is watching really great comedy that you want to get that good or just watching real shit comedy where you go, I don't have to try that hard. I, when you start, I think before you, when you're trying to get the courage to start, I, I felt it was a combination of both. Watching these amazing comics being like, oh, man, that must, uh, it's ama I, you know, it's just something about draws you to it. And you some crazy reason think that you can do it and then when you watch bad comedy you're like uh, you know because when you see the great comic you're like how the fuck do you how is he so relaxed how do you do that shit but then when you see the bad one you're like oh, I, I can i mean i could do that and he got on fucking tv shit maybe i could maybe i could try I, to I never watch comedy i don't know how much you do but i did because i don't want my fucking brain's leaky enough and spongy from alcoholism so i don't want to you know mm -hmm. get that thing in my head uh, yeah, and then say it Yes, you don't later. want it floating around thinking it's one of your references. Yeah, that's why I kind of stopped doing that. My thing is, for some reason, if I watch somebody at a club, it doesn't stick. It doesn't stick in there. But if I watch it on TV, if I sit down and watch a special, I think it gets lost in my brain with, oh, I saw this on TV and this is an okay reference. Like I'm making fun of Law & Order or something like that. Yeah, like I can watch like a Maria Bamford where I know she's not going to say anything. anything. That yeah, will, yeah, she's yeah. so original. But during quarantine, I, I started watching like some of the new guys that I hear about. and, uh, and But a lot of the, like my peers, I'm like, I hope this is mediocre. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just kind of hope I it's don't mediocre. Have to live up to this. Yeah, yeah. I don't watch. Uh, I don't watch much of it. I watch old movies. And right. For old movies, to me, are like in like the seventies and stuff. I was telling you earlier, I'm kind of on this Burt Reynolds kick, and uh, tonight <laughs> I'm watching some movie. I'm kind of have a movie night that I watch with some buddies of mine, and uh, I think we're going to watch this Billy the Kid movie. 
that has like James Coburn in it or something like that. <laughs> who like James? I mean, James Coburn's the shit. So I, I kind of do that, and then what happens is is the world keeps moving on. I think it's part of being old. Part of being old is you should not know what's going on, right? I, I while hope you, so. While you, while you lecture people younger than I, you. Well, everybody has a fucking opinion. <laughs> Twitter's ruined because it's just, everyone's got an opinion about every fucking thing. And so, no, it's, it's beautiful to not know what's going on. Yes, no, it is. It is. It's nice. Radical to, apathy. That's what I did. Yeah. But I would say act. though, there are, there are for as much as this Becca, there's a lot of funny people <clears throat> on Twitter and on Instagram. There's some fucking hilarious shit on Instagram, and I feel like I feel like Twitter's harder because you have to do it with your words. Um, where Instagram is, you know, but there's an art to that too. But like, uh, of course, I can't think of anything. There's been shit that like people write to me on on my Twitter when I look at it and I fucking burst out laughing like if it's just that right level of mean and funny it just fucking now everybody's gonna try to write mean you funny know, shit you know what uh, the, the old movie I watched that I really remembered almost none of was uh, a fucking Network is yeah. so good and so like r- yep. relevant to today it was so good to go I've seen the movie twice it. and I kind of forget it too other than when he, he's I'm mad as hell yeah, I'm not gonna take it anymore I remember that. And then I combine it with that guy who shot himself in the mouth on TV. Yeah, I'm like, Bud wait, Blyer. yeah, did that happen on YouTube or was that in network? It all just starts like blending together. I don't know, but I will tell you, uh, you know, I really enjoy uh, whatever the whatever part of my life this is. I've, I've been enjoying the hell out of it. Where but you do shit like the fucking... You fly helicopters for fuck's sake. I know. It's fun. I don't do anything. Like, I took it. We, last time we were in Australia, Hennigan knows a guy down there that has a helicopter and has this gorgeous restaurant. But it's mm-hmm. a, but And he flew us from whatever, Adelaide, I think, to the coast where his restaurant was. And like, I'm That's hugely incredible. afraid of heights and I'm very claustrophobic. So it was like two of my biggest fears Perfect. in one. And so I you know, had a few belts beforehand. And uh, it was boring as shit. I was, was prepared bo- to be yeah. terrified. <laughs> like, I'll get material well, out of good. it, if nothing else. And I'm like... No, that's a good thing. That means that guy, he flew you nice and safe. Yeah. There but I was kind of hoping he'd go fucking low and slow over the rice paddies with a fucking <laughs> gun If in you the asked him to, he probably would have. <laughs> I don't think he'd go slow. I think he, you got to keep your airspeed so you can enter a flare. I'm going to be a dick, <laughs> but like, yeah, something like that. Um... Yeah, I've flown with guys like that. I've flown with guys. There's two types of guys. Guys that just want to fly around and then guys want to do shit. And guys that want to do shit, it's just like, you realize you're doing shit and I'm here, right? Don't I get a say in that? <laughs> they, like, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. I flew uh, this guy. Yeah, I want to fucking Robert Duvall from Apocalypse Now. All right, away. well, I know a guy that has one of those helicopters. <laughs> I've got to oh, fly shit. it and, you know, briefly, and he was flying it. And then the guy that he flies with, he went totally apocalypse now. And we were out in the desert and he was just fucking hauling ass about like, it felt like 10 feet off the ground. <laughs> and I'm just thinking like, <laughs> that's, that's like, <clears throat> have you ever flown yourself to a gig? No, because it's, it's just too much pretension. <laughs> Pretension, yeah, and what land on top of an improv? No, I. I... <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? Like when we, me and uh, uh, Patrice were getting sick of the road, we were somehow riffing one night, and we came up with the fact, like, what if you were a superhero, and you still were a stand-up comedian? You didn't stop crime or anything. You were stand-up comedians. The greatest things you could fly yourself home every night. You just be like, <laughs> everybody. Oh, because I remember what I. St- I think that was him. He probably said that. I was saying how I want to have like enough money to have a helicopter. And as I'm doing my closing bit, like like a hook comes down and I just put one foot on. I just wave and they take me up and I'm in the helicopter. And then they just cruise me over to the airport and I'm fucking out of there. And we, that's what we started riffing on. And then some, I forget, it was probably no one. It was probably him because that's a really funny idea. It was that he was basically be a superhero. And in the, <laughs> instead of a sport coat, you have a cape. You guys have been great. And he would just fly him every night. Even if you were doing a week at a funny bone, you could just fly yourself home to your lair or whatever the fuck you call it. All right, everybody, it's stamps.com. 
You know, 2023 is already well underway, so don't wait any longer to level up your small business and set your year up for success. Get ahead of the competition by using Stamps.com to mail and ship. Stamps.com lets you print your own postage and shipping labels right from your home or office. Um, It's ready to go in minutes, so you can get back to running your business sooner. Uh, With rates you literally can't find anywhere else, like up to 84%. I said 80 poor. I'm not saying you're poor. 84% off USPS and UPS. Get access to the United States Postal Service and UPS shipping services you need to run your business right from your computer anytime, day or night. No lines, no traffics, no waiting. Use stamps.com to print postage whenever you do business. All you need is a computer and a printer. They'll even send you a free scale so you'll have everything you need to get started. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through Stamps.com dashboard. Set your business up for success when you get started with Stamps.com. Sign up with the promo code BURR for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments. They're not trying to lock you in. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter the code BURR, B-U-R-R. Rocket money. Try it for free for 30 days. Um, is enough time to try and completely forget about a subscription or service. Before you know it, you're paying for a subscription you don't use every single month. With Rocket Money, you can change that with a few quick taps. Do you know how much your subscriptions cost? Most Americans think they spend around 80 bucks a month on subscriptions when the actual total is closer to $200. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, right? If you're laying on the ground drinking wine and you're just out of control with your subscriptions, you need Rocket Money. The average person has around 12 paid subscriptions. Think about that. Parentheses. Pause for two seconds. Can you wrap your head around that, everybody, in two seconds? If you think you're only subscribed to a handful of services, you might want to double check. With Rocket Money, you can quickly identify and cancel all of your unwanted subscriptions. They're siphoning money out of your wallet there. Or maybe you call it a billfold. Uh, Rocket Money, money formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, like streaming services. You bought to watch, you know, porno sites. Or, or, or I don't know, maybe you were into the dark web shit. And you were trying to buy a fucking grenade. You know, you forget. You got to kick them the vig every month. Rocket Money will quickly easily, and easily identify your subscriptions. Subscriptions for you. Can you tell I'm in a rush? I always read bad enough, but now I'm in a fucking rush here. So you can't stop paying for the ones you don't want. Oh, so you can. That's a big difference. You can stop paying for the ones you don't want. Simply find the subscriptions you don't want and press cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times with customers. You know, they're not going to pick up the phone. They're going to break your balls. These guys will make it easy for you. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving an average of 720 bucks a year. All right? Just think of the dumb shit that you could go out and buy with that 720 bucks. Stop throwing away your money and cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash burr. That's rocketmoney.com slash burr. Rocketmoney.com slash burr. Um, <coughs> your fortress Sorry of solitude. Sorry for my cough, but I, I've, I, I, I saw some clips of you when you had pneumonia where you had the same cough, so I'm sure you oh yeah that that was not uh i i had such a cough like uh you know like your hair hurts yeah you know that that's what it felt like i don't have any hair on my head i'm going what is this and then the doctor told me i said oh when you cough that much you know i don't know i didn't know what he said i was just like All right. yeah i think i i had two hernias and they said is likely from coughing from 40 years of smoking <laughs> coughing at night I blew out my guts I get it. That's not possible. A smoker's cough can act like you picked up a piano after well, a while. It, it, uh, yeah, it, it it can get pretty violent. Like if if you get sick <laughs> and you're a smoker, the fucking cough lingers right, for a month or two. All right, has your coughing fits, your smoker's cough, has it ever set off a car alarm or a house alarm? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm just picturing. You coughing like as loud as De Niro was laughing in Cape Fear when he was behind those people. At the I've movies. never seen that one. That's another one I've never seen. Yeah, that's... And uh, old movies I fucking hate. Like, I would never watch Gone with the Wind or anything like that. No, most of the ones that they recommend yeah. 
Uh, uh, Maltese Falcon is great. All right. And what's his face? Uh, what is it? Peter uh, Peter Laurie, dude. If you watch him trying to steal this scene from Humphrey Bogart, the shit, the business he's doing, he has this cane. Mm -hmm. And he's tapping it on the floor. He's spinning it. He's looking at it and shit. And, and Bogart is just sitting there being him. He doesn't, qu he, you know, he doesn't quite pull his focus, but like it's, you know, and I, I remember just like watching that and it just cracked me up going like, man, that shit has been going on forever. Like actors trying to do things. Upstage each other? Yeah, like they do shit. It's funny because comedians, we have like this really bad reputation for being like, you know, they're out for themselves and it's really cutthroat and all of that type of shit. And we really just kind of hang out breaking each other's balls. I mean, there's definitely a couple of lunatics. I'm not saying all actors are like this, but that is like a thing. Like there's a famous one that I saw. I mean, it's a story. I can't confirm it. But in the, uh, the Magnificent Seven, when Steve McQueen and Yul Brenner are riding that, that little wagon with the body in the back up the street, and there's all of these fucking guys. They say, I forget why. If you went up there, they might, maybe we're going to get shot. Um, Steve McQueen is loading a shotgun. And Yule Brenner's like doing his lines or something, and he starts shaking the little, whatever he called the bullet thing, and then listening to the pellets or whatever. And you see Yule Brenner literally gives him a look, which um, I always took it as a kid. Like he was looking at him, like, let's do this shit. And they were, like, he was fucking pissed at him that he was like trying to, like, it's like, I'm doing my lines. I had somebody one time, like, fucking, they're coming around, and it's, my coverage and they already improv and I played with them and everything and they came around to my coverage and this person is still improv doing different shit and it's and they're stepping on my lines and they're sentencing me to ADR and all of this shit they're not fucking working with me and I just wanted to be like buddy they got your shit already <laughs> like I, what are you trying to do now and it's like and it was one of those things where it's like you've done this shit enough that you know what the fuck you're doing I've had that happen on, on I did a uh, number of times uh a very small part that got cut, thank God, from uh, Chris Rock's movie. What do you mean, thank God? I got this thing here. That's the where, different movie. Where, where you are you are voted actor of the fucking year. What is it? Where is that? It's, uh, it's I, I, the road. Hey, Andy. The road but, th but this was, uh, this was uh, Chris Rock's movie. I forget what it was called. It had every comic Best in it. actor, Doug Stanhope yeah, in, that's, that's, can I say the name? Yeah, yeah. The Road Dog. Doug Stanhope. Double yes. threat. You do a little tap dance here. We can. I we can. Started literally... in one movie. It made it to one festival, and I won one award. And I'm quitting. There you go. Done. But the Chris Rock thing, I had a top, top five. five. I love that movie. Yeah, I, I was playing a, a cop, and then I I had a couple lines, and I I was there for like fucking fourteen hours, and they just kept sorry about this. We're gonna push your scene as later, and uh, then it, then I got in there, and he goes, yeah, just just riff with it. Like I memorized my lines. I have nothing to riff. I'm not a riffing guy. You didn't say I'm that, like, did you? No, I tried hey, and failed. What is what I did? It was, I, I looked like an asshole. But no, you don't. You just <coughs> well, you I didn't make the movie. <laughs> well, I mean, that probably has nothing to do with that. And That's I was supposed just... to be racist. I think I was. I had to say the N word, and uh, I'm like, this just is very uncomfortable for me. Well, it's not you saying it's the cop. I know, but uh, you got to lead into it. Yeah, but then when, <laughs> not if you're when you're ad libbing, you go, okay, this might sound like it came from me. Oh yeah. Well, I would yeah. I wouldn't ad lib an N word. <laughs> I would do the scripted N word. <laughs> no, there's definitely rules to this shit. <laughs> exactly. It was, it was very yeah, the ad libbed N word. Yeah, that ain't they ain't gonna be good. Um, so you got you got you know. Even though you lost the roof on your house, yeah. So you're an award. You are year. an award-winning actor. Exactly, and that's why I did. I get this offer. It's not a big budget picture. Uh, you probably won't see it in theaters. It's going to be in this film festival, this Hollywood independent, real independent film festival. Is it going to be out here at the end of the month? Yeah, they don't announce. Please till text Friday. Me. I'll, I'll go what see our it. date is. I'll go Excellent. See it. Yeah, no, I, I would appreciate a retweet because I, I did it as a lark. It was five weeks last year in Chicago. I'm like, I'm not going to fucking Chicago. I'm not an actor, first of all. Right. I'm not going to freeze my balls off for five weeks in the worst place. And you did it. Look what happened. And I did. And uh, yeah, then I hadn't heard a thing about it. And then, then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, you're going to win Best Actor. I went, well, fuck. There you go. There you go. Look at that. I just so you are say, an actor. Yeah, and I'm a movie star because I you're star in this movie. An award-winning movie. See, that's star. the thing. Anybody can come in and do a scene, right? And get the little hey, best supporting little fucking little 
two shoe thing you did there, right? But you you actually you had to carry the movie. You put that movie on your phone. When I bag. played the UK, uh, buddy month. gave us uh, some edibles, and we decided to travel with him when we we're flying to Glasgow. So I'm also an international drug smuggler, award winning movie star. Wait, when did you consume? Every night of the UK tour. Oh, so you brought it with you? Yeah, he gave us a giant bag on one of the first well, nights. If you I were know. a woman, you would have got arrested like that woman in the WNBA. But because of your <laughs> privilege. <laughs> Dude, people who bring drugs to other countries are fucking idiots. This was from, you know, London to Glasgow. On a, you know. Fucking idiot. Why would you do they that? They were cookies. They were cookies. Dude, I don't even know the they law. Were cookie can, I tell, can I tell you something? I don't even know the laws of this country. Everybody acts like they do. You don't know what the fucking no. laws are. I don't know. I'm not going to some other country. They can paddle me in fucking public. Well, uh, to be fair, fucking tie me to a fence post. To be fair, I, uh, Hennigan carried them. So, but I was a mastermind of the international. You piece of shit. Level. You know, I remember a long time ago. I used to work in a warehouse, and there was this guy who always had a new car, right? And he was like ten years older than us. And we used to go out drinking. And then when we would be done drinking, hey, you want to take it for a spin? We'd be like, yeah. <laughs> he would have us basically drive drunk home <laughs> most of the way, so he could get home for free. That's Son great. of a bitch. You know what's funny about that is I didn't figure that out till like 20 years later. I, you know what I mean? You just sit down thinking, going, wait a minute. That guy didn't want me to drive his Mercury Cougar because he liked me. <laughs> <laughs> he was worried we were going to get pulled over. He was trying to sober up and make me drive most of the... I'm, yeah, when I, you look back at stuff, like when I hate to even say cancel culture, but when you do that inventory of your life, like all the horrible shit you did, how drunk you drove at points that, like shit you should actually be shamed for doing. I never did that. If I got drunk, drunk, I drove myself home. I didn't make somebody else fucking do it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's somebody else who's drunk. But I'm saying just dr driving drunk at all. Oh, dude, I've I've driven drunk probably 1,200 times. Yeah. <laughs> they say you have to do it like 700 times to get caught, and then I got caught, and then I didn't do it. Oh, you did for a while. I got out. I didn't of a do couple. it for a while, and then like uh, you know, a little while goes by. It's like kicking heroin. You're like, all right, I got it done. You're right. Then you go fucking do smack. <laughs> yeah, I I, I had no. A once you know times. what it was, it was it was easy because I I started comedy and and. All the guys, Dane, Patrice, Robert Kelly, none of them drank. So I was just like, all right. I mean, I just kind of do what people, you know, I don't have original thoughts. I just do what everybody around <laughs> me does. And then I moved to New York and it was like you couldn't drink and drive because I couldn't afford a fucking car. So, yeah. and I wasn't really drinking that much. It was when I came to LA the first time in the 90s that all of a sudden you had to fucking drive everywhere. And it was like, you'd have a couple of beers, you know, but I, I never drove like hammered. Yeah. I remember I might I might have a couple I, of times. I, I was Not I hammered. lived out of my car for three years and just uh, a lot of cars, all piece of shit cars, and one would break down and I'd buy another four hundred dollar car. But I the, it got to a point where I like, had a Colorado license because my license was expiring. So I just got oh I'm in Colorado. You get it the same day. So I got it there. I had New Mexico plates and Oregon insurance or something. That sport coat on, and then you get pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my mullet years, and I got pulled over in Minneapolis, and uh, I, I was I was pretty shit faced, and I gave him all my stuff, and he's like, "Why do you have? Like, <laughs> Why does none of this yeah, match?" I go, "Cause I'm a road comic, and you could just see him calculating the amount of paperwork <laughs> he'd have to do for all this, and he's just 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 get home safe." <laughs> oh wow, yeah. dude! I saw one recently on Instagram where the guy tried to fucking send this guy home just get home safe right the for people they animate these cops pulling over people <laughs> and he goes all right just get home because he admitted you know yeah i had a couple drinks whatever he goes all right do me a favor he goes just drive up there make that right park your car and walk home because i'm gonna do you a solid he goes all right and then he goes wait a minute he goes where's my wallet he goes i gave it back to you he goes no you didn't you fucking piece of shit and he started an argument <laughs> Then he got his dumb ass arrested. He was out of it. The fucking guy was out of it. So, um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I, I guess. I don't know. I, I, when I, I read the, like, the story, like the kids fucking hucking rocks over an overpass, and they, you know, one, of, one of them goes through a windshield and kills a lady. Like, how many times was were, I was that kind of kid? I was a fucking We used to put shit on the train tracks. But I, yeah. I didn't have train I, tracks. I, I had a kid... Uh, Lived down the street from me. I remember we put an office desk on the train track. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Then he used to climb up the tower. And the guy would be blowing the fucking horn, and they would be going like that. You know, by the time, it was just one of those things. There was just no cameras and shit. He put, like, a sofa on there. I mean, it was no match for the train. It can destroy, like, a fucking... It was just amazing. But what was weird was we were on, like... <laughs> The desk flying side of it. It was really stupid, well, we, but none of us were doing well in physics, so. Do, do you know Glenn Wool? Uh, no, is Robert Wool. Glenn Wool is a comic. He's a Canadian, lives in London, uh, or England. New Mexico license but plate. We're, we're, yeah, we're, we're, in, uh, we're in London, and we're so pre-Airbnb, but it was basically an Airbnb that we're put up in, and it was, I don't know, three or four stories up, and it had, we're on the roof, we have the outdoor smoking patio there and we were getting nice. fucking hammered and I'm sure there's probably some coke involved I don't know but well you want to keep drinking trash, and then you gotta do the coke like trash over there is impossible they don't have trash cans in the street because they, evidently they blew them up back when there was terrorism or, it's so hard oh is that what that trash. is so I have all this trash that's uh, accumulated and we're fucking hammered and start throwing our trash off the top of this a, a apartment building into the fucking sidewalk at like four in the morning because we're above all the CCTV cameras and woke up the next day go, I, I could have killed someone. Yeah. And I, I don't have the excuse of I'm a juvenile delinquent. I'm in my fucking 40s. <laughs> launching <laughs> heavy trash bags full of fucking beer bottles oh, in no. the street. Yeah. Jesus, Doug. Yeah, uh, and you think I'm going to fucking worry about being yeah you know, pressuring or going I got to one my of those. hand job 20 years ago? I got one of those. <laughs> we used to get hammered down at Faneuil Hall, All right. and there was this fire escape. We would climb up, me and, me and this uh, buddy of mine, and we would go up there and talk about life. We called it the roof truth. And you'd go up there, and you'd have to say what was going on in your life, you know, fucking, you know, some chick broke your heart. How old are you? Uh, 20s. All right. right. And we used to always look down. There was this skylight at the top of this staircase of a lower building. And one night we were just up there. We go, dude, you, how much you give me if I throw a fucking bottle right through that thing? <laughs> and uh, we didn't do it. And then we just kept every night. That we, and every time we'd go up there, and then eventually one of us threw it. I can't remember. It, I think it was the other guy. I don't remember. It did. I, I don't know if it went through, but I was just thinking, what if some woman was coming up there and it came through the glass, cut her face, it just... Fucking idiot when shit. When we were, uh, I was probably like 11, maybe 10, 11, 12. And my brother got his first BB gun. And our parents went out and left us alone at home with the BB gun. So we lived right in a, a Paxton, Massachusetts, right in the town square. So we're, we're trying to shoot the liquor store sign from across the street because we're right there. And, <laughs> and we're like, our parents are getting close to getting home. So uh, <laughs> we're on the, 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 whatever you call it, the fucking a roof of the... The sunroom, right. I guess you'd call it. Uh, Get a and, and sunroom. It's not called a sunroom, but it's that kind Please of way. A fucking uh, a Florida room. You know, it's okay. attached, but it's lower. I feel like than I'm the, agreeing with you when you're Anyway, the point is, we're on a up. fucking roof, and my brother has eight pumps in it, and he just does this to shoot the last bullet, and it hit a lady's driver's side window, <laughs> and it just fell like a waterfall, and she locked up her brakes. And I remember us thinking we might have killed someone at that age just okay. <laughs> sitting turned on the tv like one day at a time is on and we're trembling and trying to keep everybody our act together. cool yeah yeah this is what you did before the internet everybody <laughs> this is why video games and the internet are a good thing because yeah. i think it kind of keeps people but then they escalate it right then they reenact the game and they go down to a mall and fucking shoot everybody i don't know i don't know I don't what know. they do like our our like low level terrorism terrorists are the, you know what the worst thing about terrorists spaceship. are is it doesn't fucking work and then they always take now we got to spend 9 hours at the fucking airport and there's no trash cans and fucking that, that that's what she accomplished <laughs> You made the average Joe's life even more fucking miserable because there's, there's nothing you can... Yeah, but that guy does walk down the street in London and go, see, the, no trash cans? That's me. That was, yeah, that's me. that was me. All the pollution goes right <laughs> in the fucking gutter. That was me. You smell that? It's because of me. I was actually rebelling against the queen. <laughs> she never heard about it. I love that you're trying to take out the queen... So you blow up trash cans like she's anywhere near a fucking tr like they never seem to get the people that they're upset with. Yeah. It just has to be just a bunch of fucking regular people. 
You know? Yeah, I, 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 like I think people would like terrorists a lot more if they occasionally hit their targets. Well, uh, well murderers. I remember I did a bit about it. I think that I'm. Uh, where there's a, a, it was a, one of the cop killings mm-hmm. where they had killed a black guy, uh, on our black guy, and then it was Baton Rouge, and then like that that same week, some black guy came out and killed a couple of cops or three cops or something. I go, well, that would have worked out if, like, you killed the actual cop that killed the unarmed black guy. Yeah. Then the whole world would go, huh, that worked out. Yeah, because for all you know, you just killed three cops that were actually good guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you actually got the one that pulled the trigger, then it's a wash. Ah, emotions. Yeah, no. Emotions, <laughs> they run high. Next thing you know, you're blowing shit yeah, up. I think it's more sloth. It's laziness. I'm just going to kill whoever I see first. Yeah, I don't have time to try to find the cop that actually did it. Right. Yeah. Aren't yeah, we they're, all they're, guilty of that? Once you sit down. Yeah, that was you the don't bit. Wanna, it was like there should be a mass murderer again. that went out and just killed people that most people would agree deserve <laughs> being murdered. And then they'd build a statue of you. Well, that kid in Wisconsin, you know, one of the people he killed was a child molester. Oh, yeah? That was one of the few, yeah, that Rittenhouse kid. That was one of the few we like. I, was that publicized? Yeah. Well, wow. I mean, not initially. Not initially. Well, initially, it was like, you know, like all of that shit happens. Like, people want to get rid of guns. Guy, all right, leave that detail out. Like, yeah. everybody's spinning it. That exactly. was what was so funny about that one guy's show where he would be like, there's a no spin zone. It's but like, don't we all like, do that? We, yes, we all do. It's yes. just like, it is impossible. If you want to go somewhere, you say, come on, it's only like 20 minutes away. And if you don't, you go, fuck, it's like half an hour. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. You think I didn't just hand select the dirtbag stories I wanted to tell you from my past? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you all my drunken fucking escapades of fucking driving like an asshole. Are you uh, drinking lately? No, I, I, know, I, know I, you... I quit in uh, 20, the end of 2018. I got kids, dude. Oh, it's, that's it's right. It's just yeah. something about being drunk. And... Do you know how many facts I got? I, I had to stop listening to your podcast years ago because... You did w- not get any facts from my podcast. Just little things like, you, you, yeah, you supposedly if you quit drinking for like 40 days, your liver regenerates. Just little things like that that I take as medical fact. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I've never done the full 40 I don't even days, know if that's, but... I don't know if that's... But funny. you said it. <laughs> Cleanses it. I had to stop because uh, we would Of course I said it, listen. but I'm not sitting there with like a medical degree behind I know, that's what I'm... I, yeah. I'm, I, I'm no. aware of that, but if, right. if it's knowledge that you want to hear, it's factual. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what, what my, my disclaimer on my podcast is when I read out loud, and then it's just like, if you're listening to anything that I say, if you listen to me fucking read out loud... That's definitely. I always uh, I'll also use that when I uh, try to free form uh, some ads for my podcast. My fucking producer goes mental, like, no, just read what's on the paper because we've gotten fired from some some companies. That, yeah, so what? But for really funny shit. Yeah, so and I'm what? like, I always use you, like fucking Bill Burr. I said he was partially famous for fucking up the what was what? <laughs> the cherries, the cherries, 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 berries. and they wanted me to take that down. And I just didn't, I was like, I didn't say no. I just didn't respond to them. And then they sold way more. And then, all, then halfway through the week, they spun it around. Yeah. And then, then I did another read, and I pissed them off again, right? Uh, no, nah, they, they kept coming back for they a few did? years. Yeah, that was... Uh, the one and done one was uh, Nature's, Box. Nature's Box. I read it as Nature Box. I said, oh, you're going down on Mother Nature. <laughs> and that was fucking... Yeah, it was healthy snacks. And Bill goes, I don't need this. Just go eat an apple. And then oh. it was like, it went right out the door. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I do remember that. Apple. Who needs this shit? Oh, this is all sugar. Oh, then you're going to get hungry again. <laughs> He's just fucking lambates with Yeah. Uh, yeah Every once in a while, you got to burn a sponsor. <laughs> that's what, that's what, I, we had one was the, the one of the sheets, uh, Brooklyn and Brooklyn and sheets. And they say it's started by this couple, whatever their name is, is in the ad copy. So we every time we'd make up these fantastical situations about how like they're friends of ours. Yeah, Roy and Janice or whatever their fucking name is. You know what? One night they got in a domestic and uh, he hit her over the head with a statue. Thought he killed her. Now he's Chad, my buddy Chad, is helping him move the body, and then uh, all of a sudden starts kicking. They're, they dug a hole. They're about to put her in. She was just knocked out. And you know what? The Brooklyn and Sheets 
The blood came right out of him. <laughs> <laughs> like, something like, but it was so creative. But here's the and thing, though. Fired. People would buy it then, and they're also like, they would look forward to the ads, they wouldn't fast forward through oh, them, shit. and they obviously know that that never happened. Yeah, but it's not its not those two people that heard it. It's the fucking ad company. I, I shit all over a, an Audible read, got fired, just saying like, this, this read is embarrassing to this product, because... Yo, know, audiobooks kept me alive well, they, they probably, on the road, and probably. I'm not reading this, and I gave my own beautiful reason for why you should use Audible, and uh, but no, it's because so they, they got shit offended. on the ad copy. Because they wrote, they yeah, wrote it. they wrote it. and they wrote it. And they wrote some embarrassing shit, and, and, told and I'm going to promote Audible anyway, because I have fucking three books on it, so <laughs> they realize they're paying me for you nothing. You have three books on there? Yeah. Now, do you have to sit down and read the whole fucking thing? Yeah. yeah. How long does that take? Forever, because I read like you. Oh, uh, I know. I if I ever wrote, a, if I, I ever wrote myself, a book, and the, I had the the first two, I had my buddy Chad, my uh, uh, from my podcast. I'd do a chapter, and then he'd do a chapter, and then I'd do a chapter. But the first two was fun because uh, I would I'd stop it at points, and then have people from those stories, podcast style, go, "Okay, hang on a minute, you." That's not the way I remember it. So we do. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was it, so it was part audible book, part podcast. So when you read fun. it, if you if you fuck up a word, do you got to go back to the beginning of the sentence or the paragraph? No, you have a. They'll have a producer there, or the one I did during COVID was on you know Zoom, and they'll stop and go, okay, yeah, you fucked that up, and do that again, do that again, which was a lot. How of, long were the sessions? Uh, probably six hours a day, three days. Can you get Keith Richards' book on Audible? That's 700 pages. I just can't picture him. I would imagine he had someone else read it. I did a... Uh, uh, Why didn't you do that? Uh, Don't you have an opener on the Running road? the Light. <laughs> have you heard of uh, Sam Talent, Running the Light? It's the best, best, one of the best books I've ever read. No. And it's about... It's a fiction, but it's about a road stand-up comic. Kind of like I play in this movie. This movie, that, by the Fiction, way, The Road so Dog. False. I play a, a 55-year-old alcoholic, chain-smoking, uh, <laughs> waning in his career, stand-up comic, still on the road, dying of liver failure. So, And that's basically what that book is about. He was so angry when I go, I'm doing a movie that's pretty much your book. It's not... Oh, he was mad he, that they, they didn't well, yeah, he wanted. Book. Uh, well, he wanted to get his book optioned and then... But this, yeah, he can still do his book. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck was I talking about? We would audio books. Audiobooks. Uh, uh, and Keith Richards, so he outsourced it. Why didn't you outsource? Oh, so it? so running the light, Sam Talent's book. He had a different comedian read each chapter, and I remember doing my chapter, and he was there, and uh, fuck, what was the word? I. Uh, <laughs> it was gallop. <laughs> It's, it's something he began to gallop away, and I I read it as galop. And I went, all right, I, I think I'm too tired to do Doug, this. Doug, we're going to stop I today. Just say, yeah, you got a lot of it's, good stuff. Did you just say gallop? I, I, I do that. All, I mean, I can't read anything. <laughs> I kept calling. Uh, I you know what's funny that that singer Adele. Yeah. When, like I knew her name was Adele, and when I would go to read it, I would say Adelaide. <laughs> I think it's I would one still of those do things. That. Right after it comes out of your mouth, you feel your, your, your cheeks getting red. Like, oh god, did everybody <laughs> hear that? Do they all know how <laughs> stupid I am now? You can see that in people's faces. I think, the, but I, but I like doing that because I feel that that inspires people. They're like, this guy just said Adelaide, <laughs> <laughs> and he's doing all of these gigs. Shit, I got to get into that business. That sounds like it's sounds like it's easy. You know. Can we get back to talking about cars? You talked about buying this four hundred dollar cars. I remember a long time ago when you did the Man Show. You had oh, a yeah. uh, you had I want to say it was a Dodge Aspen Woody. It was uh, like it was like a Dodge Aspen. I don't know if it was a Dodge Aspen. It was it was one of those Chrysler K cars. No, when, it was, when Lee Iacocca came back to uh, to to kick Chrysler. Yeah, it was an unvertible. I bought off of eBay. I was really good at the man show of just sitting there all day when I should be writing and just buying shit on eBay because now I had some money. And, uh, <laughs> it was this like lime green, green with yeah. white racing stripes 
and I thought it was a convertible, but they I, I, I didn't look the never showed it with the top up. It had mm-hmm. the the canvas around where you would you know have a but oh, there was no, no roof. They back just cut there. the roof off. Yeah, and it was such a piece of shit. We had to drive up to Fresno and then drive it back to the lot. And we just it was such garbage. Wait, but, and we but drive it had it wood on the, the side, right? I don't think it had wood. Oh, it didn't have wood. No, it didn't. I remember that car because I had an audition on whatever lot you guys shot on. I walked by it and I was laughing because I remember you said you used to park it next to Rogan. I parked it, yeah, I had assigned parking next to, he had some fucking $120,000 Porsche (laughs) and I parked that next to him and I had the props department print up a bumper sticker that said, I'm with Rogan with an arrow towards (laughs) his car. (laughs) He, Rogan always had cool cars. When I first came out to LA in like 95 or 96, he gave me a ride from uh, the Laugh Factory over to the comedy store. And he was already like a le- like the legend. Like I, I, yeah. like I looked up to that guy like, oh my God, I can't believe Joe Rogan's giving me a fucking ride, you know? And he had something, I want to say it was Japanese, but it was just some sick fast with a big fucking spoiler in the back. I think, I don't, I don't remember, I'm not good with 90s cars, but he had, you know, at that point, I think he was on news radio. All right. So he had news radio. I know he had a Barracuda, I think. I remember it was that like one. from Trick My Ride, or I yep. don't, I don't know. If that's no, I don't think it was that. No, 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 no. Or... I think he, because those guys, those guys on Pimp My Ride. All right. What was hilarious was they would redo the whole car, but not the powertrain or nothing. So you still <laughs> had the shitty engine and transmission. Yeah, it's kind of like Bar Rescue. Yeah, with like a fish tank in the fucking hatchback. Like, all right, I don't, know, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do with that. Or a flat screen. I remember one time they put a flat screen like underneath the car, and the I don't know why people were like oh. It's fucking dope. Like, you land your back and smoke a joint. It's like, that is the dumbest shit. They did something like that. I don't remember. That looks like back when, remember when they would have like the aquarium lighting underneath the car? Yeah. And that was considered um, like a cool thing to have. You still have it, that old beater pickup truck? I do. I resent that it's an old beater. It's a fucking great truck. 68 right. Ford F100. What are you talking about? Yeah, well. It runs like it's a, a pickup purrs, truck. like a kitten. I bought a, uh, which was supposed to have 4,000 original that miles. old beater pickup truck. Yeah, oh it's an old beater pickup truck. That's what you loved about it. Wait, which one are you talking I've had a couple of them. The black one? I don't know. It was one that you had. The Remember when we did the, the white end one? of the world, 2012, end of the Mayan calendar? Oh, okay, me and Rogan one, and yep, Joey yep. Coco Diaz. Okay. You, yes. You, you were driving it then, so it was yeah. whatever you had in 2012. Yeah, oh, no, I, I still have that. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I bought a, uh, a, a a pacer that was off of eBay. I every time I bought a car off eBay, piece of shit. But it was gorgeous, I mean, like uh, gorgeous looking. What color it was, was it? So, uh, orangish. Mm. Uh, you know what's funny about the, the? There's a big misconception about the pacer that that car came out in the '70s and no one questioned it and everybody liked it. I remember being in a car the first time we saw it. Me and my mother, we were bursted out laughing, going, oh, yeah. "That is the ugliest no, it was fucking ridiculous. car." It was ridiculous, like the Gremlin. All right, those AMC but whenever cars. they do like a that '70s show or that type of shit, they have everybody back there in a pacer Act and like no, it's cool. yes, acting yeah. like people did this shit and everybody had a fucking lava lamp and collars out to hear. It's like fucking Chevy Vega. My mother had a yeah. Chevy Vega wagon. And that's when the, I like the that lemon car. law came out, and that was one of the reasons. Oh, it was? Yeah. I remember guys in my neighborhood used to buy like those fucking cars. They would somehow pull the engine and jam like a 350 in there. I mean, there wasn't even enough room under the hood, and they would somehow... I remember this kid up the street... When you look up those kind of cars on eBay, half the ones you find are exactly that. They're souped up, you know, fucking right. drag racing, fucking... That's a fascinating thing, though, that I learned about those, because you... They, with my ignorance, I thought if you just put a, uh, a faster engine in there, the car's automatically faster and that type of stuff, which it is, but you're also adding weight. So that's like the whole like dynamic of a race car where it's like the more horsepower, the more weight. That's why, have you ever like looked at it actually a real race car? No. Everything is gone right down to like the accelerator pedal. They take that, it just looks like a coat hanger hook. It's whatever that floor thing, take that out, just every, it actually looks like a piece of shit. I was, uh, I stood next to one, um, I went to the F1 race in uh, Montreal. Just to dump weight? 
just I mean, to dump weight because you all you want you just basically want a guy in his seat and an engine <laughs> as light as possible lowest to the fucking ground i saw one of those f1 cars like up close uh one of those red bull ones the ones that daniel ricardo we were in his uh area with a garage and it, i was like man this thing looks like a piece of shit like i could put my fucking foot through it and then the race starts and they were just like <laughs> just like a blur we had such great seats man it was like right and the first turn so this like, is for what? This was for F1. F1? This, yeah, this is back when... Uh, Which one? The one in Montreal. All right. Um, I watched that, that first is. season because it was quarantine where you watched every fucking thing on Netflix. Yeah. But that F1 series yeah. is still going. But I, I would recommend uh, MotoGP, which right. is the, the, the motorcycle racing, which I missed this whole season. I was so fucking busy this year. But like um, when I started watching it, it was Mark Marquez and... Uh, Andres De Vizioso, and it was a Honda versus a, um, a Ducati. And dude, they would have these fucking epic ends to races where in the last two, three laps, they'd pass each other like 10 times. And right. I would be up off my couch screaming, watching this shit. And the problem with uh, F1, I found, was the cars were so fucking wide. And, and, and um, Mercedes and um, Lewis Hamilton yeah. were just so good. It was just sort of a race to the first turn. And if, if Lewis Hamilton was in first place and he was in that clean air, that was it. You just watched, you basically were just watching. I'd be get annoyed because the, the coverage. the would die? No. Hmm. Super safe. Super safe. Like no one's knock on wood has died in MotoGP uh, since like 2013. Um, it was sort of a freak accident where this kid got run over. But um, there was one though, one fucking race, man. It was this long straightaway. And then it had this right turn, and these two guys on the straightaway got into it, went onto the grass, and they fucking wiped out. And this fucking bike was cartwheeling, going like 200 miles an hour. And these guys were turning like this, and it came flying through, like, uh, who was it? Uh, Valentino Rossi, the doctor, right? He was turning like this, and you just see a fucking motorcycle just go, like it was like a trick shot. Wow. And they had to stop the race. And he, pulled over and you can't imagine how much you must be shaking like dude like i almost just fucking died they're like all right get back out there and ride 200 miles an hour like, like, well, 200 miles an hour on the, if, on the if street if you're already doing that uh, if you're already going 180 miles an hour around those corners how much more are you going to be phased by a motorcycle almost hitting you um like, every second of that you should be shaking and shitting in your pants yeah, but the, I think that like with anything, there becomes like a complacency to it. All right. And then we're all, because there's still shit like as a comedian that like can happen. Like, I mean, it does. Once you start yeah, selling I tickets, guess if, yeah, a lot of the danger. A drink at you. Like, yeah. Like, do you remember like back when, you, you know, before you became a name? Yeah. You'd go in and you would say some shit. And there's, there's, there's one thing pissing people off. And then there's another thing of like, is that guy going to come on the stage? Yeah. It becomes like a different thing. And I feel like with motorcycle racing, it's like, yeah, this is what we do. And yada, yada, yada. And we got this inflatable, when I fall off, the fucking airbag comes out. But we don't have anything for that. <laughs> you know, I would just immediately go, okay, that's never happened in my career. What is the odds that that's going to happen again? Just, yeah, I'm fine. Just, it's not, it's not going to happen to me. I'll be, like, you got to like block it out. But the, at the end of the day, they still are human and don't want to die despite... I don't what know what that they're they're doing. why this made me think of that, but do you think if that guy from the Bills with the heart attack, do you think if that happened in the Super Bowl, they would have canceled the game? No fucking way. <laughs> not at all. No way. No. Absolutely not. I don't think they would have canceled a playoff game. I think they would have get him in the ambulance before they tried the CPR. Like uh, I've heard this, that you can't die at Foxwoods. Uh, my my brother's wife's father, ex-wife, he's, he would go to Foxwoods all the time and had a heart attack in a slot machine and died. Uh, but they don't, they, they make sure you get off the property before <laughs> you're declared dead. You're not allowed to die at Foxwoods. I think the same thing would happen if that guy had a heart attack in the Super Bowl. Just out of curiosity, your clientele are degenerate gamblers. Like, that's, that's not going to, he didn't die from gambling. <laughs> 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 like, well, what is it about, like, I could see if there was a, okay, I got one for you. If you look up shark attacks... They always say, in a rare shark attack. They always say rare. 
Here's something you don't fucking see every day. Well, yeah, because we're on land and they're in the water, right? But it's they always have, like that word is attached to shark attacks like ornate is attached to a theater or degenerate is attached to <laughs> degenerate gambler, ornate theater, rare shark attack. Quaint uh, village. Yeah, and it's <laughs> exactly. And I just feel like that there is a there's a little payola going on in these vacation spots. Dude, people get bit all the fucking time. If you talk to people that go to Jamaica and fucking the Caribbean and all that, like if they go enough times, they were there when somebody got nipped in the, you know, they go up and they do a little test bite to see if you're fucking edible or whatever. Yeah. It happens way more. And then when somebody finally fucking dies, you know, and you got the yellow raft, you know, and that chick's looking for a kid like in Jaws, then they got to go, okay, somebody died. We have to report on this. And then they go, in a rare... Shark attack. The fact that the fucking thing comes up, I think, and is nip nibbles you. I'm just making. I'm just going my. This, once again, I'm just saying shit here. I think if there's probably like the same way you can say it's organic. You know, if you don't feed the cow another cow within a year of fucking milking its titties <laughs> or however they get around it, yeah. I feel like with shark attacks, if it's going up just to see if you were edible, and after it's t removed half of your calf, realize you aren't edible, it's not an attack. He was just curious. So, yeah. but then if somebody fucking dies or loses an arm, <laughs> somebody buy, loses I'd... an arm, you got to make a movie out of it. That's how that works. <laughs> oh god! And what he was kept her fixing name? shoes. What was that girl's he, name? He's a one-armed cobbler. 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 Like yeah, the one. Dude, the surfer. fact God, that I she had such a great still thing about her, I have no idea what it was. Dude, the fact that she still would go out there. I mean, you want to talk about like? I mean, I can't even like the fucking level of fear. The fact that there's this fucking thing that could come at you and finish you off. I mean, if it was Hollywood, I mean, the thing would be coming back to to finish you off. But like. My thing about the ocean is all the bullshit is I'm got my head up here and it's all underneath there. Like when I walk in the jungle, all right? I don't walk in the jungle. But if I was to walk, why did I just say that? If I was to go into the jungle, why did I say that? If I was to go, if I was to go into the jungle, like at least the fucking things, it's like I am on the same plane they are. It's hidden in a bush or whatever. There's just something about something coming basically from you another know, an from an another spike. world. <laughs> from another yeah. world. And then dragging you into an atmosphere where I can't even fucking breathe and then getting eaten alive. I mean, it is like literally you've left Earth, okay? You're not on land anymore. I if I if I just like, hey, I'm still on planet Earth, I go in there. Yeah, they talk about all the time those Jacques Cousteau stories that is the whole other world that has not been fucking explored. You get dragged in. It's like the what's his face's movie, Us. When you step through the fucking mirror, right? And that fucking chick comes out and kills you and takes over your life. The same thing. That that is what goes on in the ocean. I do not fuck with the ocean on no, any level. No, or people go not to the even beach. Ponds, not even lakes. So the balls that this woman had, the ovaries on this chick to fucking go back out there. On that stupid, see that's a, that's the hors d'oeuvre plate. To say guts is being an, a, a kind optimist. Uh, uh, other people might say fucking idiot to to go back out there after having your arm eaten. Just saying, you you put a positive spin on it. She's a gutsy lady. No, I think it's fucking insane to do right. it. But I would say this, dude. I mean, you know, look, look at how much dumb shit have we done in our lives? I don't, I'm fucking terrified of a fist fight. But people do it for for fun. For a living. Yeah, they don't even get paid for it. People like to go out and punch people in the face. I asked a professional boxer one time, I go, what are you thinking when you're going down to the ring? And he was like, he was an Irish guy. He's like, what the fuck am I doing? Why do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> and you know the second the fucking bell rings, he just, all right, I'm fucking doing this again. And just like muscle memory. <laughs> Take so I had a special call that. Why do I do this? That what I would that I would always be thinking that when I would be fucking like you know we don't have a microphone. Is that going to be a problem? And you were like going out to do a show at like a fucking college cafeteria. And I remember as they were like going to bring me, I would, that would, that would always be thinking, why do I do this? Like why can't I just get what like, what is wrong with me that I need to go up here and make all of these fucking people like me? There's like why can't I just just have a fucking job? And just go to work. Maybe, hey, Helen. 
you know, and just fucking sit down. Yeah, but uh, and be all right with that, and have a cup of coffee in yeah, the paper. We'd be okay with that for a fucking six-hour shift <laughs> of an eight-hour shift. You'd be gone. Like I, I love comics who say, you know, if this ever becomes like work for me, I'm gonna quit and do what? Get a job, which is exactly like work to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I'm sure you're talking to a lot of people out of quitting. <laughs> They would talk somebody out of quitting that should have quit, and then years later they do quit. And no, you're like, but I, I always—I had think another eight years to that fucking Bronco ride. It's, it's the new ones where every and we all do it in an interview. What what advice would you have for up and coming aspiring comedians? And then you say, get as much stage time as you can, and get up every possible chance you can get to get on stage. Right. And you go, well, most of these people are going to suck. And you're telling people 99% of who are going to suck to clog up as much stage time as possible. Don't take no for an answer. <laughs> that kid's just going to be pounding the fucking rotary dial. Call, I'm know. sorry. I'm calling a club owner. Sorry. That's you did it right. like this when I was I was in the age. jungle a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> We're basically losing our minds. That's why we're all dressed up. This is the uh, final podcast that I'm going to have here. Um, anyway, uh, dude, it's so great to see you, man. Thanks. I will, I will shoot so, you a tweet when we have... Uh, they re Well, don't wrap it up this fast. Oh. I want to say your dates again. Yeah, okay. This fucking guy, if you live in Australia, I'm telling you, you got to see this guy. This guy's one of the greatest comedians of all time. And there's so many people out there that pretend that they don't give a fuck. This guy, in the best way ever, truly... Does not give a fuck, and you, you, I mean, what a pleasure to just listen to somebody saying what I, he thinks. I, I give a, I give a lot of fucks in the morning. Like I'm all fucks. I know. I, I'm giving know away you're every take fuck. Away. I'm trying and to say then some I, nice then I, shit. Then I start so I drinking, and I don't give a fuck. There you That's go. why I didn't like that. That helicopter ride was fucking boring. Why? Because I got drunk, and then I'm not afraid of anything, and I don't give a fuck. Do you think maybe there was a part of you that you were so scared that you had to go there mentally? You're like, oh, this is fucking boring. Like when somebody sees a no. horror movie, be like, oh, that didn't fucking scare me. You know that uh, there's a roller coaster between L.A. and Vegas at that one place. I know. I read, right I've you cross that. the border. Yeah, I've and it's that. terrifying. Yes. And one time we'd stop there <laughs> the just to wake up. <laughs> like you, 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 you get... You get soggy after three and a half hours driving. Hey, well, let's stop and take that roller coaster, get some fucking, you know... Uh, adrenaline and uh, then continue to Vegas. My wife at the time and I stopped there and decided to stay at that hotel. So we do the roller coaster first and woohoo. Right. And then I went down and I started drinking and playing Let It Ride for hours, losing. It's the worst game ever. And I'm just free cock. I wish that was a funny name. And then, uh, then I let went, it ride. Like people have endless amounts of money. <laughs> yeah. Let it ride. Yeah. It should be let that ride. <laughs> so then when my ATM shut me off, I went, fuck it. I'm going to do the roller coaster again. And I couldn't have been more bored. I sat on that roller coaster, <laughs> hammered, angry, didn't care at all. It was the least thrilling thing. So what I'm saying is. I can is, take you on an amazing helicopter ride. I will, I will look forward to that. Oh, you'd go up? Yeah. Well, next time you're out here, call me up. I'll take you. I'll show you an LA you've never seen. You know what? Last the time LA I, from the and air. It's been a million years. Last time I did your podcast, mm -hmm. we said we were going to go up to some fan you had from way up in there, the Arctic Circle in Canada, and we go, yeah, we should go up there together and do a show. Yeah, and you no, know no. that guy's still waiting for us to show up. No, I wanted to do that. It was in. Uh, I've had a couple of people up. It's not Yellowknife. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yellow's in it. I, yeah, I'm yellow knife, sure. and then there was, there was another place. I keep threatening to go there. All right, well, I, now you called me out on it. I got to go up there. It's got to be, <laughs> be at least three planes. Tucson's to get got there. a new airline that just flies to weird places in Canada. And I guess this, I talked to a lady that was getting off of it, Flair Airlines, and they, they have non stops from Tucson to Fort McMurray, which is eight hours north of Calgary. And uh, for so 125 bucks, she said, each way. And I'm like, I think I might. She goes, it lasts through March. I go, I'm off. When I get back from Australia, I, I might fly up Wait, there. Wait, north of Calgary? Show. That's not how, so that's past <laughs> Edmonton. Yeah, yeah. Eight hours north. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that'd be fun to do. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even charge for it. I'd just go, hey, if anyone can set up, because I wouldn't want to have to go through the bullshit of getting a work visa. Hey, if anyone's got a stage and some empty chairs, oh, I remember I'll be there. this because I've done all basically all the pro the provinces down south where all the people are. Yeah, well, the 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 the, the, 
colonists or whatever they call them. <laughs> I want to go where the people were who used to live down there, who got sent up there. I want to do that one. Yeah, oil rigs or whatever the fuck they do up there. Do you there. know I never went back? I went One, one time you, you hooked me up at Chilkoot Charlie's. Oh, and, yeah. Was that Anchorage or Juno? You were so angry. No, that's Anchorage. It's still it's there. Anchorage. There's, in fact, they have a comedy festival coming up. Uh, How Alaska was it? Before I had to go down to the fucking the, uh, the the, comedy condo. Was yeah, it? The, the band house was the, the filthiest. Like of Dude, all the, the bed legendary. was literally like like somebody took a fucking saw and went down the middle of it. Yeah. It, was, it was like itchy, like yeah, woolen. Cigarette burns on everything. Like the TV was, had like. I fucking stayed there, and I remember. Uh, Ralph, they wouldn't Ralphie make a few months later? Rest his soul came up to me. and He was like, "Yeah, I just did Chill Coo Charlie's." I go, "Dude, how about that fucking comedy they condo?" Put him in there. And he goes, oh, "I didn't stay there." No, because they. Couldn't. And I want to be like it looked like it did. No, they they for <laughs> for liability reasons. It was so they w were afraid he'd go through the floor. It was that shitty. He so told me he to. said, "Fuck you, I'm not no, staying there." No, no, that was absolutely. Oh, Ralphie, you <laughs> motherfucker! <laughs> his lies still exist. His <laughs> He's gone, but but his fictionalizations live on. Yes. <laughs> Do you know how many porn stars blew him at the comedy store after everybody left? Oh, he let's not these do this. Stories. Let's not do this. What? It was part of his charm. It was part of his charm. <laughs> <laughs> I have a funny story about that. I'm not going to do it here. Out of respect for a guy who's not here to defend himself. All right, that is the podcast, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. The great Doug Stanhope. He's the Road Dog movie. The Road Dog movie. Road Dog movie. The best actor in the Road Dog movie. It's called The Road Dog movie, right? Yes. Or The Road Dog. The Road Dog. Well, it's called The Road Dog. The Road the, Dog. The site is The Road Dog movie. Oh, The Road Dog movie. Check that out. He's the best actor. And uh, that's it. Doug, thank you so much for coming Pleasure. out. Thank Great you. to see you again. All right. I we just piss. shook hands like we just made a deal. All right. Thank you. <laughs> hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, February 10th, 2015. How's it going? How are you? Um, I'm back in the USA. I just landed at JFK a couple of hours ago. And uh, I've been trying to get this fucking thing done. My my Olympus LS10 that I bought like six, seven fucking years ago, it finally died. I think it finally died after a trip around the world. The old girl couldn't take it. You know, she went quietly, quietly in the night. Um, anyways, I'm psyched to be back. I had a great time. I'm just a whirlwind tour around the world. I don't even know where the fuck I am right now, and I don't even know what time it is. Um... Yeah, I do. It's 5.53 p.m. East Coast time, according to my um, my little fucking little little iPad thing here. Uh, ah, shit. I don't know what to tell you guys. What the fuck do you want from me? You know, all you cunts out there who, who gave me shit because the podcast is so late this week. All right? You didn't have the fucking decency, did you, to go onto my website and maybe have a little bit of empathy. You'd be like, oh, oh, that's why. That's why it's late. He's flying back from Mumbai, India. Fucking three hours to Dubai, another fucking 13 hours on the goddamn plane. And some douche missed their connection when we were in Dubai and their plane was on their plane. Their bag was on the plane. So they don't let the cunt on the plane, yet they spend 15 minutes trying to find or 20 minutes trying to find the fucking bag. And they take it off the plane. It's like, at that point, why don't you let, just let the asshole on the plane so we can all get out of here, right? I mean, that's what I was doing. Well, you know, when I used to run an airline, that's how I did it. So I don't know what's going on with United uh, Arab Emirates, Emirates, whatever the fuck the airline is that I flew. Uh, anyways, first of all, before I get going, thank you to everybody who came out to my shows in India, China, Singapore, whatever the fuck I was this week. Uh... It was my first trip to fucking Asia, and I had a, uh, a great time. I did not get caned in Singapore. Um, I didn't have any secret police in China, and no religious crazy people got me when I was in India, you know? So I, I, I survived it. Singapore was great. China was great. I don't fucking know what to tell you. Let's just talk about India, all right? 
first and foremost, the second you get to India, this is what you're going to see. Mumbai, India, you are going to see the greatest drivers and jaywalkers you've ever seen in your fucking life. I've never seen just complete fucking chaos when it comes to driving like like I saw in India. And even like the old people were good at jaywalking. And what killed me, they never changed their gait. I guess gait, is that running? Whatever. Whatever fucking speed they were walking, when they stepped out in traffic, they just stepped out and just kept walking at the same pace. The traffic never sped up, never slowed down. Nobody got hit. It was unreal. I've never been in the back of a cab so many times going, ah, well, watch it, watch it, watch it. And just nobody slows down. Nobody speeds up. Everybody just keeps doing what they're doing. It's like it was like it's like watching Chevy Chase in Caddyshack when he's uh, fucking putting barefoot. No, 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 no. That's how they fucking do it. Um, definitely the most insane, craziest, coolest country I've ever been to was definitely uh, at least that city, man. That was um, it was something else. The people were really cool. Uh, you know, at first you freak out, you know, when you show up. And uh, we landed there at like midnight. And, um, you know, we showed up to the hotel and there's a guy with like a machine gun and somebody checking for bombs underneath the fucking car, you know, which creeped me out at first. And there was like a metal detector going into the fucking hotel. But then I was just like, all right, now that I'm in here, I got a guy with a machine gun standing out front. This is way better than a red roof in. <laughs> so I guess it's just a big. I guess maybe back in 2008, they had a terrorist attack. So ever since then, and the hotel I was in got attacked or whatever. So now they just have a guard there all the time. But other than that, I didn't see anybody with the gun. It's a really safe city. The food was fucking tremendous. And uh, I did the show, the last show of the um, of the uh, of the tour. I'm sorry, guys. There's going to be a lot of fucking mental uh, brain farts here this week. I'm just trying to take in everything that I saw. Um, it was awesome. And I got to hang out afterwards. I went out and got dinner with me and like 20 Indian comics and just sat there talking comedy for a good half hour, 45 minutes before I had to go to uh, the airport, which was uh, one of the highlights of my career, to be honest with you, to be able to talk to people on the other side of the world that do what I do, you know, and um you know, this, these guys, I'm going to send you a link to this, although maybe I shouldn't because I know they're trying to lay low. But for those of you who listen to the podcast I did over there, those same guys got in trouble because they just did a fucking roast, right? And according to them, it was way tamer than anything in the, in the U.S., but uh, they haven't had, I guess, a lot of roasts. That might have been the first one. And they did it. They roasted a couple of Bollywood guys. And everything was fine. Everybody laughed. Everybody had a good time. And then for whatever reason, either they posted it online or somebody else did. And the second went online, you know, you know what happens the second something goes online. Everybody starts going, oh, my God, what about the children? What about the fucking religious thing that I believe in? What will this comedy do to that? You know what I mean? Like they will. It's, it's a fucking roast. Everybody's laughing, having a good time. So whatever. So they, everybody freaked out, and um, it got like eight million hits. And uh, they're like sort of in trouble, but not in trouble. But they're in trouble. Like they could spend eight years in courts with I don't know what lawsuits or whatever. I was reading some of the comments, and someone was just going like, you know, what does this say? What is this going to do to society? And blah, 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 blah. And it's like, have you fucking looked out your window over there? Jesus Christ. They got like in New Delhi, they have like a major problem with rapes. Is, is a roast going to make that any worse? You know what I mean? Jesus Christ. I mean, I mean I'm not even going to fucking say some of the shit that I saw over there. I saw a stray cow. A stray cow. It's just, it's fucking... It's awesome. I, see, I don't want to say a half of this shit because I don't want to scare people from going over there because it's one of the coolest fucking places I ever went to. Um, but, yeah, you'll see, like, a stray cow eating garbage next to her, like a Mercedes-Benz driving by. Okay, so you got you got the entire fucking colors of the rainbow there. It was, it was awesome, man. And the, uh, the food was insane. Can't say enough about that. And... Um, 
other than that, what else did I get a chance to see? I didn't get a chance to see anything. Oh, this was the scary thing was I went into the country and because we, we fuck with, with uh, Indian people when they come to the U.S., I guess, because we're trying to make sure that they don't illegally emigrate, immigrate, whatever, to our fucking uh, country. Immigrant, right? Im- immigrate? Yeah, immigrate. That's how it is. Emigrate, you leave. Immigrate, you come in. There you go, Bill. Yeah, you worked that out yourself, didn't you? Um, <laughs> anyways, so we fuck with them. So this is tit for tat thing. So then they fuck with us, specifically Americans from the West Coast. So they don't fuck with anybody from the East Coast, I guess. Um, as far as like you come to the country and then once you get to the country, you, you need another piece of paper stamped by the government so you can fucking leave. You know, or it's some Bronx Tale shit. Like, now you can't leave until you get this fucking thing. And, and it's, it, you know, it's just some big pain in the ass thing that took like two and a half hours for me to get. But um, I guess they've had problems with artists on the West Coast, but not on the East Coast, which means to me that maybe somebody, a governor or a senator of a state on the West Coast, like maybe Schwarzenegger said something. I have no idea what, but somebody said something. Somebody pissed off somebody. So next thing you know, old Freckles has got to get up in the fucking morning. And I go down to, uh, I don't even know what the hell it was, but I had this this big, like, envelope of shit with my passport, my working visa, the fucking contract for the show, all of that stuff. I go inside the building, and the, the promoter's not allowed to go with me. So now I'm in there. I mean, this was, like, one of the biggest, like, touristy things that I got to do, like, really experience being an Indian. And I fucking go up to the third floor, and there's this big, long line of people, all from different countries, trying to get this piece of paper so they can fucking leave. And uh, the line moved quickly, but then they just got you into another room. And it was like being at the fucking DMV. And you know how that goes. You're going to show up with a stack of papers like the goddamn phone book. And when you get up there, you just see the look on their face. You're like, oh, fuck you. What else do I need? And there's always something else. So whatever. I kind of charmed the lady I was talking to. Like uh, I couldn't understand her. She couldn't really understand me. And I finally was able to convey it to her that I was a comedian. And she kind of, you know gave me this look like really you think you're funny and i forget what the fuck i said but i was able to make her smile which was good because eventually i needed the promoter to come up there to help me get over the last leg of it but what's funny about indian people is they got this thing they do when you ask them a question they don't shake their head no or nod yes they do like this bobblehead thing and i was sitting there like this white dude in Hong Kong told me that they're going to do that, and it actually means yes. You're going to think that they're being assholes, but it actually means yes. So this lady kept doing it, and I kept going, does that mean yes? Does it mean yes? Long story short, one of the comics told me later on that it doesn't mean yes. It doesn't mean no. It means that they're, how did he put it? They're uh, politely accepting your existence or something like that. <laughs> I forget what it was. But... Um, Everybody that I asked a question to there. I was like, so if I give them all this stuff, like I'm going to, I'll be able to get the piece of paper, I'll be fine. And then the, they do like that bobblehead, like, hey, you know, maybe you will, maybe you won't, you know. Maybe you'll be on that plane back to the U.S. Maybe uh, you'll be in that, you'll be in the garbage next to the cow tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know how, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. So I'm just going to do this fucking thing with my head. So I got a big kick out of that. And, um. And here's the thing, too. Like, I've really been working on my temper. I stayed up there for two hours and 45 minutes. I never lost my temper once. At one point, I sat there and I looked over at the lady and I was just like, I looked down at the floor. I was like, how fucking long is this going to fucking take? That's the worst I got. Sort of whispered that. But then I just looked around the room and I saw this family of four from the Philippines and they were in front of me. And I'm like, all right, they're still here. The guy who was behind me. He's still here. So everybody's waiting the same amount of time. You know, for the love of God, Bill, fucking relax. Um, so whatever, but, uh, I just, oh my God, I, I saw so much shit over there so quickly went down to this, um, they're having like this street fair thing and they had all this, you know, brought my wife down there. They had all this 
amazing clothing and all that type of shit and artwork and all that type of stuff. I, it's just one of those things you just walk around like I'm, I'm in fucking India right now. I couldn't believe it. And uh, then what's funny is you go out to go do the show and you feel like you're in the United States. It's the exact same thing. People laugh at the same shit. It's just that when Singapore, Hong Kong and India, they had like these... You know, don't talk about the government, don't talk about religion, don't talk about race. And then you go to the show and the comic in front of you is talking about all of that shit and basically how it works. For you to really get in trouble with that, you would have to be basically living in the country, build up a reputation for doing it all the time. And then eventually one of those governments would be like, all right, let's send let's send somebody down there. And then they'd go down, they'd watch you and. And all you get is like a fine. Either they find the promoter, the venue, or possibly the performer. I don't know. It's not really like, you know, harshly um, enforced, which is actually was a pleasant surprise with the way everybody's taken everything so goddamn seriously lately. Like every fucking thing that you say now is just like. I mean, it's fucking ridiculous, and I really think co comics have to hold the fucking line here and not apologize, or else, I mean, I don't know wh where it goes from there, unless you want comedians just up there talking about widgets. Um, and what kills me about the so-called outrage is it's such a small percentage of the population. First of all, you, you realize how many people could just give a fuck about stand-up comedy? Like, if you walk down to the amount of people, the, the small percentage of people who've actually been to a live show, you know, it doesn't even fucking appeal to, like, 80% of the population, as far as I know. You know what I mean? They're doing other things. They may be into music, or they just watch sports, but, like, you know what's fucked up? Like, I love stand-up comedy. Before I became a comedian, I only went to one show ever. And I was almost 24 by the time I started. So I could legally could have gone to stand up shows for like six years, 18 plus, And then once I was 21, I could go to anything. And I never went. I only went one time and I wanted to do it for a living. So I don't know. All right, and of course this stupid thing just crapped out on me. Um, really having a rough go here with the technology on this trip. I apologize to everybody. Uh, anyways, what was I saying? Um, I guess I was just talking about how few people actually even give a shit enough to even go to a stand-up show. Um, so if a comic says something, it's really not affecting that much of the population. That really, like, Who the fuck lives their life by what a fucking comedian says in a goddamn joke? It's so ridiculous. It's just got to be... Uh, I don't know. I'm really hoping this is just a fad <laughs> to be taking comedians seriously. But anyways, that's the end of the whole um, the whole world world tour thing. Um, it was really insane. I went to five countries in three weeks. I did uh, eleven shows in nine different cities, five different countries. I don't know how many different time zones. And uh, it's the first time I ever was in Asia, and um, I just it was. It's just a part of the world I never, I always wanted to go, you know, and I just never, you know, you just don't think you're ever going to get to do something like that. So uh, thanks to everybody who listens to this podcast, watches my specials and all that type of shit. And uh, I actually learned something. People downloading my specials illegally isn't always a bad thing. <laughs> I mean, it kills me monetarily, but had they not done that overseas, then they wouldn't have seen me. So uh, I don't know. I'm starting to rethink some of that shit. Although I do stand hard as far as I got a hard line on the fucking I stand hard. Yeah, with my dick standing up. I got a hard line when it comes to fucking taping me in a club when I'm trying out new shit. Um, that's that's fucking brutal because then I go to town and my new shit is already old shit. And it's just you can't write fast enough. So can all you fucking teeny boppers uh, just take that into consideration? I know it's all about you and your fucking Facebook pages now and oh my god look at me with my selfie and all of that shit. It's this was fucking hilarious now is it's like the crowd wants to be famous. 
Back in the day, the crowd was cool and they were just sat there. All right, monkey boy, you want to be famous? Let's see if you're good enough to be famous. Now it's like half of them aren't even paying attention to you. They're literally like, really, Bill, is it half of them or is it like three, four people a show? All right, three or four people a show are like already on their Twitter accounts or Facebook or whatever the fuck they use um, talking about themselves. <laughs> trying to put myself in their position but i just can't picture myself any show i ever went to when i was a kid you know if i paid to go see it i would watch it wouldn't you you got all fucking day to do your duck face into the phone don't you all right let's do a little uh a little bit of advertising here uh sherry's berries everybody so where do we go here where do we go here let me go back to the fucking the questions here Ah, God, I, there's got to be a better way to do this fucking co- podcast, something a little more professional. Well, how far into this are we? 15.11, what's that? 26 minutes. Okay, let's continue talking. Oh, by the way, I bet you're all wondering, hey, Bill, did you finally have a chance to watch the Super Bowl? You know? That big football game that's played every year that your home team won? Yes, I did. Not only did I watch it once, not only did I watch it twice, I watched it three fucking times. Sorry, I gotta plug in the charger. Um, I watched it three times, and uh, it's just a hell of a fucking game. Um, and I actually think Edelman should have got a co MVP because not only did he have a big game, he knocked his defensive back out of the fucking game. You know, broke the guy's goddamn wrist on a wonderful fucking tackle. And uh, we exploited whoever the fuck they put in for the guy that broke his wrist that I don't know his name either because I was traveling around the fucking world and I don't collect football cards anymore because they fucked up the whole way you did it. You know, back in the day, you could just go out and buy a whole stack of them and eventually you'd get all of them. You know, now they try to make them deliberately rare and they have like pieces of game worn jerseys it's just not what it used to be i just wish tops would put out a set of 390 like they used to back in the fucking day and someone like me could ride his bicycle down old freckle face bill you know and eat your awful gum that was in there that fucked up one football card in every pack why can't i go back to doing that so i'd know back then i swear to god i I could have announced the fucking game. I knew everybody's name. I knew the offensive lineman, defensive lineman. I knew fucking everybody. Now the only way to do that is you got to play fantasy football with a bunch of fucking jerk offs. You got to go to somebody's living room and have a fucking draft. As you sit there with adults acting like you're CEOs of a fucking league that doesn't even exist. It's one of the saddest, most pathetic fucking things. Anyways, let's talk about the game. Um, even though it's way over, uh, um, obviously the excitement wasn't there because I already knew the I knew the end result. But I was anticipating how I would feel throughout the game. I would say that when Brady threw the pick uh, in the beginning, um, I guess with the broken wrist, I guess that that would have made me feel like they kind of offset. But uh, I always get nervous once once there's a turnover and I'm thinking like oh, that's going to be the first of many. Definitely when we were down by ten, I definitely would have been like it's over. We're not coming back from this shit. And uh, you know that ridiculous catch, I would have completely freaked out. But um, I'll tell you, everybody's giving Pete Carroll shit. You know they had a great stat that I saw. I'm usually not a big stat guy, but that play that Pete Carroll called. That was run a little over 100 times during the regular season. It resulted in like 65 touchdowns or low 60s touchdowns, like 40 incompletions and like no interceptions. It was something like that. It was like 64, no, like 65, 66, something like that, touchdowns and 45. It was a little over 100 times they tried it. But there was never an interception until that play, so... It's just one of those fucking things. And God, if anybody knows, it's just one of those fucking things. It's a Patriots fan with like the helmet catch, you know, that fucking ridiculous pass that Eli threw after Brady to Welker shit the bed. Um, But, you know, it was fucking hilarious was seeing Tom Brady's face after that ridiculous catch that that guy in the Seahawks made. He just he just had this look on his face like like really like how many times do I have to win the Super Bowl? before I, I, I actually and the defense will just fucking get a goddamn free and out 
and let me ice the fucking game. How many fucking times do I got to drive down the fucking field for the go-ahead touchdown? I did it in both fucking Giants games. And you guys are out there letting people catch it between their taint and their fucking ankle. For the love of fucking God. You know, that whoever that Patriot was that jumped up and over, that's the result of those fucking don't, don't hit a defenseless receiver. Because back in the day, even though Malcolm Butler tipped that ball up, that other, that safety coming over the top, he would have gone right into that guy's jaw. He wouldn't have hurled him like, oh, don't step on the receiver. It would have knocked the ball out. So thank God. And uh, I loved seeing a drunk um, Robert Kraft, and I loved that he demanded an apology. That fucking Jim Ursay. What a bunch of horseshit. Did you guys see that thing ESPN did where they had the uh, the science guy actually investigated the advantages or disadvantages of a deflated ball? And they actually found out that it was it was actually a disadvantage. Um, but there's an article that came out that I retweeted. Now, granted, it was from a it was from like CBS Sports Boston that really debunked a lot of the shit. Of course, you guys won't believe it, but um you know, I don't know what. I hope that they pursue that. They should pursue that the way the Colts complained throughout the years. Just keep complaining right through the fucking draft. All I know is if fucking Bill Belichick sat on the rules committee and changed rules to make the game easier for his offense, I mean, he would have to go on in front of the Senate defending himself. Jim Irsay does it. Nobody gives a fuck. Um, so that's my message. Fuck Jim Irsay. What are you going to cry about this year, Jimmy? Um, anyways, what else? I'm trying to look at my list of shit here. Anything else that I wanted to talk about? Uh, oh, and I lost my list. Well, I guess that... Well, there goes that. Um, anyways, I'm in uh, New York City for the uh, the Patrice O'Neill event. Um, benefit, I should say. Uh, the third annual time is flying by and uh this is such a wonderful event it's the most positive thing i do every year and uh, we got a hell of a lineup this year as always uh we got some new faces we got some new blood uh this is the first year we actually had, we got a couple guys on that were uh you know i think got to see patrice before they were even comics i'm guessing by their age michael che and hannibal burris so that's pretty cool to have that sort of element like watching people who were influenced by Patrice's comedy before they started, or at least very early on in their career, they were able to see him. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And once again, it's just such a great benefit. And uh, all you guys who've gone out throughout the years and have bought tickets, it's really, you know, had such an, a, a positive effect on uh, the people that Patrice loved because... You know, unlike a lot of fucking charities where there's an infrastructure and there's people getting paid, nobody gets paid. Like I said, the only money we have to spend is the money that to rent out the venue, and then the rest of it goes to his loved ones. So it's really just like direct. Like, you know, when you want to help wounded warriors and veterans, like you just wish you could just be like, give me the name of the person and where they li live, and can I just fucking write a check to this person directly? Um then, of course, then they would just put it in the bank and then it would be considered income and then they'd get taxed on it, right? Is that what it is? Ah, these fucking cunts. I don't know how to do it. Uh, but I think the way we're doing it is about the best way you can do it. And by the way, did you see all that shit on fucking No More? That they don't really do anything other than just raise awareness? It's the biggest fuck. Any, I'm telling you right now, I am done with any charity that says they're there to raise awareness. Fuck No More. Fuck that uh, pink shit in October. All of them. It's a bunch. It, they're the modern day flim flam snake oil salesmen. They're all getting rich off of, of, of people dying of diseases or getting beaten up, spousal abuse, all of that. They're literally going out buying fancy cars and nice houses because regular people feel like they're doing something. I, I don't know. I, have, I don't know. Of course, I haven't investigated any of it. I think they're all full of shit, and uh, I'm done with it now. I'm done with I'm done with I think I'm pretty much done with just about every one of them other than uh, what's that one that Danny Thomas started? That one has just straight up like a five star rating. Is it St. Jude's Hospital? That one, and then the thing I, I talked about a few weeks ago, which I still haven't done because I've been overseas, where you, you see if you're a match 
for the uh, bone marrow transplant. They can literally save somebody's life. Like those types of charities that are transparent, there's just a handful of them, you know. But isn't that, isn't that the truth with everything? I mean, there's a lot of people that play music, but how many are really good? Charities are no different, everybody. All right, let's get on with... Um... Oh, is this a bad thing? Is it bad to, to think someone's a bad mother because they still wear leather pants? That's probably a bad thing, right? I'm here in New York, and I was sitting down eating yet another bad slice of pizza in New York City, you know? New York City is just like Chicago, where it's known for its pizza, so there's so many fucking places that are living off that reputation that, like, you know, you have to talk to somebody that lives in Chicago, and they'll tell you where to go, and pretty much they'll, they'll, there's, like, five fucking places, maybe, in each city that people will recommend, and everything else is bullshit. So this place across the street, of course, is bullshit. And I'm sitting there, I'm eating my slice of pizza, and they got some sort of uh, Latino Judge Judy thing going on, and uh, which is just at a total different level where on this show the defendants can actually put their hands on each other I guess once one's a uh, the prosecution one's a defendant whatever, whatever the fucking legal term is the person bitching and the person getting bitched at they can actually like one this guy he actually ran up to this woman and ripped her shirt open and pulled out like I don't know if he was bitching that her bra was stuffed and uh that's what he was suing her over some sort of false advertising i have no idea the sound was down and even if it was up it was in a different language and i was the only one watching it other than the guy making pizza so when he ripped her shirt open i screamed out what <laughs> this pizza place and everyone's looking at me like what am i talking about by the time they looked up they'd cut away so I don't know. Maybe they thought I was some sort of redhead Latino guy and I could read lips or some shit. I don't know what. But anyway, so this woman walks in. This lady walks in with her two kids. She's got on leather pants and high heel shoes. And just right there, I just immediately judge her. Like, she's, she's too fucking self-involved to be a good mom. Then I was like, Bill, you're too, oh, because of what? Her pants and her shoes? Am I wrong for saying that? Ladies, I would love to hear from you. And is there the male equivalent to that? Wouldn't that be like the guy, if you saw a guy, he's a dad of two and he comes in and he's got his hair highlighted and his fucking eyebrows shaped up, you know, looking like he's trying to do the uh, book a roll for the Ricky Martin story, you know, maybe wearing some cologne. You know, aren't the both of them still kind of whoring it up? Like, are you still trying to find a mate? Like, what's going on here? Uh, probably uh, everything I see. You know what? Somebody's probably going to take an excerpt of that and then put it on there, and then it'll be, oh, sexist rats on the Monday morning podcast. You fucking morons. Um, anyways, <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm just being honest. Like, I feel like uh, if I see a woman with kids and she's wearing leather pants, uh, I'm going to say that... Uh, I don't know. Somebody might fall in a swimming pool and it's going to take you a minute to get there. <laughs> ah, shit. Anyways, Hong Kong. H-O-N-K. Hong Kong. By the way, people who live in Hong Kong are known as honkies. How funny is that? Um, well, I think it's funny. Hang on. <coughs> um, all right. Hong Hong Kong. Oh, by the way, India, there's so many fucking people there. Like, you, it takes you a minute to be able to breathe that fucking air. I definitely felt like... Uh, I've done a couple times living in Los Angeles. I've gone on a hike, you know, in my leather pants. You know, but I don't have any children, so it's okay. My leather hiking shorts. And if I am jogging a little bit and I'm, you know, breathing hard or whatever, I felt a burning in my chest on, uh, like really smoggy days but uh i was not jogging when i was in india and there was definitely this this like you know it takes a second for your body to get used to oh it's, it's going to be this level you know um having said all of that and as much as a pain in the ass as it was to get the fucking slip and all that i can't wait to go back um all right hong kong bill you probably already talked about this 
but can you speak about the pollution and the constant tickle in your throat caused by the air over there if you haven't already? Oh, that's what somebody experienced that in Hong Kong. I didn't feel that. I felt that in India. I felt there was that tickle in your throat. Um, there was definitely, it was definitely hazy, but LA gets hazy. Um, but uh, I would think a lot of that was, yeah, there's just a zillion people over there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to start saying a bunch of negative shit. There's already enough negative shit about a lot of sh- places over there. Uh, they're fucking amazing cities to go to. I highly recommend it. But, yeah, there's definitely a zillion people, and you see the effects on the environment, which is why it's funny when people deny global warming and that we're having any sort of an effect on the environment or any of that type of shit. And for years, ever since the beginning of time, the uh, the fucking earth has heated up and cooled down. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, I am not a scientist, but they seem to be very alarmed at the rate that it is heating up this time. And this time of year, people always point at snowstorms and go, you see, it's snowing in February. Uh, this one scientist guy was saying that both the summers and the winters are going to have are going to be really erratic and uh all i can say about it is i hope that the 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 people who say it isn't true are right because if we're having an effect on it and we're not fucking with the population other than to keep adding to it uh oh my god i almost said the worst joke ever forecast calls for a shitstorm Oh, I'm such a Gemini. Sorry. Sorry to anybody who ever remotely even liked in, or enjoyed comedy because I just ruined it, a part of it. You know what I mean? What I just did to comedy with that awful joke was like during a war when a city gets bombed and, uh, you know, a really old historic building gets blown up. That's what I just did. Really, Bill? I think you just told a bad joke. I think comedy will be fine, you fucking jerk off. All right, foreign music. Billy, have you developed a love for any music you've heard while traveling? Um, I traveled so much, I didn't have a chance to take in too, too much of anything. Um, I will tell you that uh, when I was in Singapore, I think I was in Singapore, I walked into that hotel that has the infinity pool at the top that you're you're not allowed to go into, I discovered, unless you were a guest. I just wanted to walk out and go see it. And they were like, ah, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And then the lady was like, well, he's doing a show here in town. And they were like, yeah, well, have fun at the show. You still can't look at the pool. Um, when I was in the, the, the lobby of that hotel, there was, uh, there was these women playing... Um, I don't know, these instruments from Asia, basically, as far as I can tell. You know that one that has the strings, but you hit it with little hammers? Um, They have it in every karate movie that I've ever watched. Um, Not during a fight scene. It's usually when the person comes, the the hero comes to town, and uh, the hot girl in the village, that the douchebag that the hero is going to have to fight, notices the hero when he comes to town, and then that guy immediately hates the hero, and then they have to fight over her vagina basically um you know that instrument that's played in the background i like that one and i like the music i like the mood that that creates uh by the way i'll tell you right now chinese girls are fucking hot man good lord beautiful fucking stunning um same thing with the women in singapore they all got some cutie pies you know every goddamn country i went to Every country has cutie pies. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that right now. And as far as music, I didn't fucking listen to anything other than I heard that shit in a lobby. Um, that was it. You know what's funny? With the hotel we were staying at, at in 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 uh, Hong Kong, they um, they had all these beautiful fucking women working there. All these Chinese women, right? And they all had names like Susan and Ethel, Meg. And then you'd walk out and go to a store across the street and everybody would have, like, Chinese names. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, what are you doing here? I know your name isn't Helen. (laughs) Fuck, I forgot to do that joke when I was in... You know what I wanted to open with in India? I was just so fucking tired, I forgot. I I wanted to open with, like, you know what? 
you know, whatever. It's nice to be here in India. And I know I've already probably talked to most of you on the phone. And uh, by the way, we all, everybody in America knows your name isn't Scott. You know when they do that? Is there anything else I can help you with? What is your name? Scott. <laughs> No, it isn't. My name is Dakota. That's going to be funny when they update it to those fucking awful celebrity names that people name their kids now. What the fuck do they name them? You name a kid like Carburetor or some dumb shit like that. Uh, you helped my wife give birth. The fuck out of here. Um, well, if she heard that joke I did a few minutes ago, she'd have a miscarriage. Uh, you helped me with my wife give birth. Dear Billy Boy. I am writing to you from my lovely wife's hospital room, and she gave birth to our beautiful and thankfully not redheaded little lady. Oh, fuck you. Uh, my wife was a complete champ going through 29 long hours of labor. Holy shit. No wonder they can bitch longer than we can. If they're fucking built to take 29 hours of labor, do you think you're going to beat them in a fight about whether you can watch the game or not? Fucking it's over before it starts. One round lost. Um, and now I have a huge respect for mothers everywhere after seeing what an intense process that is firsthand. Anyways, that's hilarious. It took 29 hours of labor. At what point did your, your opinion start to change? Hour 17. You know, I got to say, you know, these mothers, they got something. Um, that's funny that I'm judging that lady wearing the fucking leather pants. She probably went through 29 hours too, right? At least between the two kids. And the fact that she can still fit into leather pants, you know? I don't know. Maybe that's my insecurity. But I think she's still trolling for cock. Uh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> let's take that out of context. Let's just shove that somewhere. Put that on the news. Anyways, my reason for writing is while she was in labor, I tried to play some music to help distract her from the, from the uh, contractions. After about three songs and a few contractions, she said to me, and I quote, This music isn't helping. I need something else. Put on Bill Burr's podcast. Bullshit. Jesus Christ. Well, that's probably why she pushed it out. She wanted to fucking stop hearing my dumb voice. Obviously, I obliged the woman giving birth to my child, and we sat there listening to old freckles distract her from the pains of labor. I am sure the nurses were a bit confused when they heard a litany of shits, fucks, and cunts coming from the phone, but we didn't care because it was helping. Thanks for all you do and for helping distract my wife for a while from her uterus trying to push a little, little wrecking ball through the, her birth canal. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Well, there you go. See that? My podcast can be used for things that are good, right? Isn't that lovely? All right. Go on to the next one. Uh, coworker. Dear William, there's a woman, or as I like to say, a fucking lady at my, at my workplace who I am in love with. Uh, there was a project, and I was handpicked. Oh, fuck, I just forgot. You know, this is, you know something that I love about traveling? is the random shit that you see. Somebody bought me a cigar um, when I was in New Zealand. Thank you, by the way. And they had a, a cutter and matches and all that shit. Now, everybody heard that, and I said, thank you. Please don't do that. Nobody else do that because I'm really trying to cut down my habit. Um, but I appreciate the gesture. So anyways, he gets me that. And by the way, if you're going to pick out a fucking cigar you got to pinch the end where you put your mouth, and it's supposed to be spongy. It's supposed to go in, and then when it comes, it's supposed to immediately come back, and then it's going to have a nice draw. The rest of the cigar, it doesn't fucking matter. All right? And because uh, if it's hard where you put your mouth, um, it's like you ever have like a straw in a milkshake that's too thick, and you, just, you can't even fucking enjoy it? Um, that's what ends up happening. But having said that, that's another reason why I don't want a fucking cigar from someone in the crowd. Because if you're actually pinching it, I don't know where your fingers have been. And it, it just gets gross. So anyways, but I'm smoking the cigar anyways. And uh, I'm in Auckland, New Zealand, right? Had a great show. Played this unbelievable theater. And they had this organ there that it was one of the top five or six organs in the world. Um... And, you know, you see an organ with those giant pipes. You just think they're playing and that's the pipes 
that you're seeing is is you know where the all that music's coming from it isn't it's actually those pipes are uh just for shelf for the most part and you go in the back I mean, she t- this lady took me in the back there was three floors of inner workings to this organ and i'm telling you like giant rooms of things that you know opened and contracted like a goddamn accordion and then all these different sized pipes all the way down to these little things you could smoke crack out of that all were part of that sound and i guess these old guys would come in every uh like month to retune it you know i don't even know if it needed to be tuned that many times but uh i guess they love the fucking organ so much they used to joke it was like their train set but um Anyway, so it's just as far as like random shit that you see. So I'm smoking this cigar. And it's like one in the morning. I'm in fucking New Zealand. Other side of the world. All the way down near fucking Antarctica, it feels like. And all of a sudden, somebody walks by. I swear to God. With like a Mitchell and Ness Art Monk jersey. A Washington Redskins jersey. I'm looking like, is that a fucking Redskins jersey? I'm in Auckland, New Zealand. And then look in the back and it's, it's Art Monk. Not only is it a jersey, it's a fucking great jersey. Who the fuck has an Art Monk jersey? Great choice. Whoever the hell has that. That's one of my... uh, I hated him when he played because I was a big-time Cowboys fan back then before uh, old uh, Jimmy Facelift came in there and um, Jerry. Jerry Facelift came in. Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson. I've never been able to keep those two straight. Uh, So anyways, I like. that's the type of shit I like. It's just the randomness of that. I saw, and there's a bunch of, of bootleg Yankee shit because wearing like a Yankees hat or anything New York is just like, you know, it's like the fucking chick who wears the Paris shirt that's never been there, little Eiffel Tower, someday. But they're not like Yankee fans. I actually heard a funny story of some Mets fan, I guess, fucking living overseas and couldn't stand that because none of them, because he wanted to like shit on the Yankees as a Mets fan. Like, I don't know, doesn't really have a leg to stand on, but... uh he found out that they were just wearing them to wear them. And, uh, oh, the other thing, too, is when you go into a country that doesn't really speak English, I've told you this shit, and I saw this in France, where, like, like the shit that they have in English never makes any sense, or it doesn't, you know it doesn't mean what they thought it meant. Like, when I was in Hong Kong, I was reading their T-shirts the way they read our tattoos, you know, when we get the Chinese characters where you think, like, this means, like, brotherhood, this means serenity, and it really just means, like, uh, you know, take a left on fuckhead street or whatever the hell it means. Um, somebody had, uh, ah, Christ, I knew I should have written down, I can't remember. Somebody actually had a football jersey with the number 69 on it, and where the name went, it, it, it said, all night. <laughs> All night, 69. There you go. This guy wants to get some and give some all at the same time. Good for him. Uh, anyways, co-worker. Dear Bill, there's a lady at my workplace who I am in love with. There was a project, and I was handpicked to help out in her department. Not sure why, but there were plenty of other people who could have done it. Or maybe it was fate. Maybe it was Cupid. Maybe it was, I don't know what, something bringing it together. Anyways, this person says, because... Of this, we have worked together on numerous occasions. When I'm doing something on the computer and she's sitting beside me helping out, I can't help but notice she's looking directly at me. Jesus, buddy, how many more fucking signs do you need here? Sometimes she will be one aisle over, bent over a desk, talking to someone and adjusting her tight jeans where she knows I can see it. Okay, this took a left turn. I ain't seeing relationship here, buddy. I'm seeing... uh I'm seeing a fun time for about six weeks, and then I'm seeing you losing your job. That's what I'm seeing now. All right, let's, let's keep reading here. We work in a large building, and she is all the way on the other side, so we, so we correspond by text messaging. Oh, that's always good. Good move. Good move. Get it in writing. Write something lewd to her. Uh, believe me, she'll keep every one of these, and when it goes south, she'll fucking show it to your boss, who probably also wants to bang her. Um, we work in a large building. Wait, wait, wait. When, uh, oftentimes, when I text her about work or have questions, she doesn't respond. I'm guessing if she was into me, she would reply back immediately. But t- sometimes I get nothing. Or is she playing hard to get? 
I really want to make a move, but there is a fear of hostile work environment, or worse, I get fired for sexual harassment if she doesn't have the same feelings towards me. It's killing me not knowing what to do because all I do is think about her. Thanks and go fuck yourself. P.S. I'm married and have kids and so does she. Oh, fuck you. That was a big waste of time. Ah, uh, Jesus Christ. All right. I think that's the podcast for this week, right? That's not, that's not, that was a pretty decent effort, wouldn't you say? Decent effort all the way around. Uh, that's the podcast. I want to thank everybody um, who came out to my shows as I toured the south of Asia. I still can't believe I got to do that. You know what's fucked up? I was in two countries that had one of the wonders of the world, and I saw neither one of them. I didn't go to the Great Wall, and I didn't go to the Taj Mahal. Uh, so, yeah, what are you going to fucking do? I tried. You know, I did my thing. Um, anyway, so I am in New York City right now, and I'm doing the Patrice Old Patrice O'Neill benefit tomorrow night and uh, I don't know I'm on a different time zone I might go out to the clubs tonight who knows who knows that's the Monday morning podcast go fuck yourselves thanks for listening